<laughs> the path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the iniquities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Ladies and gentlemen, the Church of Laszlo has begun. Hey, yo. Yo. All right, everybody good? Never better. How are you, sir? I am great. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Good to see you bright and early this morning. Yeah, not bad, huh? We both made it on time. We did. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the wake-up text there, Snow Cone. Appreciate it. We were actually early. We were. I know. So that's it, right? We just had to do like two meetings in the course of a week, and now... Yeah, we're good now. All that pressure's off. I mean, it's really been hanging over my head. It, it, it truly does, though. Because, it does. It's okay, those little things, man. I'm being, no, joking, I'm being but, honest. It's, it's those little things that get me. I think about it constantly. Ever since both of these were like, hey, you need to come to both of these meetings. We really need both of you at these. Right. Uh, then it just became like, okay, I cannot forget this. I, I'm emailing myself. I've got reminders in my phone. I know for right. most people, they just put it in their calendar, and that would be enough. But they that's do. not enough. Because then I have to stop well, by the boss's also, office. let's be and, honest. Um most people are awake it's, and at work. And they're already at work when the right. meeting's set. We're not, you know, this is outside of our normal work hours, which our work hours is a very small window, so, it, you know, it just makes it different. Right. But it does give you that worry. Like, my God, man. <clears throat> well, I'll just say it. My youngest uh, texted me the other day from school and was like, I'm not feeling good. Can I come home? I'm like, hmm, I had just dropped him off. I'm like, nah, what's going on, man? And I realized he had music. He hates music. Hates what? it. Hates music class. Oh, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hates music class. And, you know. What do they do in music class at his I age? I don't know. And that, my fact that my oldest hated it, too. And then yesterday, I was driving him home from practice. He's like, can I skip school Thursday? I'm like, why? And he's like, I got music. I'm like, it's one. I'm like, you hate music that Are much. Are they just bored or like they get bad grades in it? Are you graded in music? I, I don't remember music in. He said that. Look, I don't know. Uh, you know, I haven't talked to the teacher, so I don't know. He said that, you know, he can't sing. Right. He's not good at it. And that, you know, she singles people out who can't sing. He made it good. And I was like, well, he's like, and they should just grade us on participation. Well, I thought that's what they and did. I'm like, okay, but maybe, you know, you got to learn how to carry a note and a certain... I don't know how it works. And he's like, and he looks at me and he goes, well, if that's the case, then they should grade us on our athletic ability at gym, right? not just by participation. Right, same with art. And I was like, oh, I think you're right. But I was just like, man, you can't hate... You're too young to hate music class so much... You can hate music class, but that's bothering you on Monday about something that's coming up on Thursday. Right. That causes stress. Serious stress. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. Just tell his teacher, like, don't ever send him music again. I'll come pick him up for breakfast. Like, I do not care. Right. I don't know. And I, I mean, I don't remember, again, getting graded on this. For art, music, and gym, I know that we alternated days or whatever. But for music, when I was in elementary school, I think the teacher came to us. The whole time I was in, yeah, until we did like, you know, if you were in band or something, that I was separate. That. For music, they came to us. They came with a little cart full of instruments. Yeah, or, or like a, a little keyboard, and she'd play piano, yeah, and you'd sing, that. and then you'd get ready for like, you know, I think we did a, a, an assembly for the D.A.R.E. graduation, or for mm-hmm. a Christmas, you know, the holiday thing, and, and they get you prepared for that. Yeah, but and then the, in fourth grade, I could play violin, or you can play like a brass instrument. Oh, we didn't do that. Grade. We didn't do that. We did band and strings, but that was like a separate thing. If you wanted to do that, you did that during recess. So if you joined Ugh. strings or whatever, you had to buy an instrument. You had to show up at school, I had to and go then to poor school. So, uh, well, we had a, a band. Sure. Like we, I mean, I think it's normal I mean, that a lot of schools have you? a band. Did you? Huh? Did you? Uh, yes, they had We're a, in band. a band room. I know for sure. Yeah, and kids go and do it, but that's like an elective. That's like a thing you choose to do. And we didn't do that until I don't think until junior high. Was there band? In, you guys played strings in elementary school. We had the option to play violin or cello or whatever in fourth grade and then the brass instruments were fifth grade yeah i don't remember that at all they just came and you sang and then i got in trouble for like you know horsing around or whatever she would say that i was 
uh, not paying attention, right. talking with friends. But th- I don't recall like that was not a class that I worried about. That was a blow off class, right? Because it was singing, and you either can sing or you can't. It's just well, an odd thing that both my kids have hated it yeah. so much. Super weird. And they do really good in school, so it's like they, they both hated music. Like, man, and like I wasn't good at art either, but I didn't dread that because again, as long as you kind of mm-hmm. tried, right. then they were fine with that. Now, yeah. PE, I you know a lot of kids off talent. That's what no, it's exactly. Doing, it's you off talent. It's, you can't. Yeah, music and art, they talent. don't do that, right? The PE you had to do. No, maybe so many that's just how he feels. Like I said, sure. I don't know. I haven't talked to the teacher, but you know, for him to be, I just think about it. Like you know, it's music. It's right. elementary school music. What are you doing? For that, there? Right? How is that? I mean, how you made it so bad? I, no, look, I'm not judging your teaching. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a go. I'm just saying you've somehow made it so bad that there's a kid out there who's worried about going to your class for one hour. Weeks in advance. About <laughs> three crazy. days in advance. Yeah. Like, he doesn't worry about anything 20 minutes in advance. I've never seen him uh, worry about what's for dinner before we're right. headed to go get dinner. Right. But he's thinking about, thinking about how it's much keeping he him mu- up at yes. night. Yes. And I really want to know what happens in his right. music class. because What happened in yours when you were a kid? I think, we just, I think we just went and stood at a... Like, they had, like, you know, little... I, like, like, bleachers, risers, I guess. Right? But, yeah. right, you stood on them according to height. Yeah, that was. And then like, she played the piano. We sang like Barry Manilow songs or something. And then we left. Yeah, that was it. And then uh, there was like a play. Right. You and she was s- like, who wants to be in the play? And you raised your hand if you wanted to be in the play. And you try out. And if you her, didn't, yeah. then, you, I don't know, you pulled a rope or something. Yeah, you know, we did like right a. Yeah, you worked behind the scenes. Right. You could. You, you helped be a part of the production. Right. right. I don't know yeah. what it was. Yeah. Yeah. We did like a golden oldies thing or something. Yeah, I think we did. I think Annie I sang Blue or something. Velvet. I don't know. Yeah. But, and then yeah. you have to do the holiday one. But yeah, I don't remember. I didn't like music because it was pretty boring. It just sitting in there singing those songs. But it was, it was definitely a blow off class. And I didn't sing because I can't sing, and Same. it's embarrassing with the person next to you. And I don't think my teacher was ever like, "Hey, you're not singing." I, I think no, I just did like, what <laughs> I would do at church when I was a kid. You just kind of you know move right, your mouth stand there. and act like you were singing. But I don't think she ever. Else. I don't think she ever heard me sing and was like, "Oh my God, you have a voice of an angel." I need <laughs> right. to really. Uh, dig into you and find out who you are as an artist and get you to learn to express that voice. I think she heard a little bit and was like, mm, okay. That's what I'm wondering. kind of mumble a little bit. If right. Chacho, they're like making him stand up and sing by himself. Right. Because <laughs> if that was the case, like on Monday and the class is Thursday, I'd be like, I have to miss Thursday. <laughs> right, exactly. And maybe, th- I mean, I think it's got to be because why else would you be that, that stressed I would be about? terrified. Because like PE, I know a lot of kids stress out about PE. Unless she's really going around and making sure people sing. I guess, but you're like all watching you do is their try, lips and right? stuff, right? But if you're if you can't sing and you're standing next to people, you're like I don't want to sing, right. right? Yeah, I don't want to sing. I mean, I feel like it was just an effort thing. Are you trying or not trying? And our music teacher sucked. She yelled at us. She got fired because she sucked so bad. Like the parents got mad because the I'm not even kidding. The performances were so bad, and so she knew that she was. <laughs> she must have been on some sort of strike thing where she'd gotten a couple strikes because the, our teacher, our non music teacher, our regular classroom teacher told us listen she's getting ready to come in here and i shouldn't be telling you kids this but you know her job is on the line because the last thing didn't go well we're in sixth grade i'm like okay her last production didn't go well not even a joke and then she comes in and she's yelling at us like you guys are a bunch of idiots and you and she called me a derelict well i I told you every year i do have my concerns but you know they are what they are they're not major not enough for me to like you know march in there but I, both of my kids wanted to skip the assembly okay. when they were that age. Like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, I didn't And so, that. you know, I didn't make them. And there's always a letter that says, you know, hey, make sure you bring your kids to the assembly because it's important. We've been practicing. I'm like, why do you got to send me an email that makes sure that I bring my kids and everybody else is getting it unless... You're putting this thing on, a lot of kids ain't coming. Right, it's after school, right? Right, right, yeah. Okay. Like, you don't have to really send out an email to be like, hey, make sure your kids come to baseball practice. Right. They They just go. Yeah. Parents want them to do it. They want to do it. Yeah. Kids want to do it. If they don't want to do it, they don't play baseball. Like, it's like, why are we, what are we doing here? Yeah, I don't know. But that's it. So, you know, like I said, who knows? Who knows how they contacted our parents when we were kids? I don't know. And let them know that there was an assembly, but somehow they knew. I just remember at the beginning of the assembly, the teacher would always get up there and tell the parents, please don't leave just because your kids are done. It's rude to their kids. And yet, parents still left. Of course. I often wonder, would I be the parent that leaves? And I think yes. 
I think I would be because life's too short, if I'm being honest, to sit there just for that kid's sake. That's what his parents are there for. You know what I mean? Those, those parents are going to be there for that final performance, and that's enough. I don't think that all the parents mm. need to stay there the whole time. Just it's the luck of the draw. Fine. God, I mean, that's one thing. I, I, you know, there's lots of things that sound cool about having kids, but sitting through those assemblies. Thank God. I mean, grades, I know I shouldn't say that because maybe I would enjoy it, but neither one of my kids got into that. Right, and no band Whatever, or any like, of that. No, like, you know, hey, join us for the choir thing. Right. Like, both my kids are like, can we please just skip? I'm like, well, what day sure. is it? Because if you're with me, you can skip, but if you're with your mom... I got a feeling you guys are going to be putting on ties. <laughs> right. Sanjay up in that thing, singing your, singing your hearts out, boys. <laughs> Don't worry, though. I'll be in the back. I'll be in the back looking. The Church of Laszlo. All right, what are we doing? We are going to talk about... What are we going to... Oh, yeah. Is it cheating? One of Laszlo's favorite no. games. Is it cheating? No. But he hasn't I haven't w- said what it was yet. <laughs> but just, oh, I mean, it's already said, know. I he already knows. know. Because uh, he knows. You don't say, is it cheating, if the answer is... Right. If that's, if that's like, so hey, if, if the list. question is, is it cheating? Then the answer is no. Right. Because that's the only way that it is cheating. Are these things cheating? Like, well, you'd know. You wouldn't have to ask. You're right. right. Basically. Now, right. That's fair. that doesn't mean that Lazo's rules apply to everyone. Obviously, sure. these lists well, they exist. They do apply so to these everyone. questions exist. They well, apply to everyone. That doesn't mean that they're not troubling, and it doesn't mean that they're not worth breaking up over or getting a divorce over. Or uh, all of those things, but it's not cheating. Quit okay. just categorizing everything as cheating. It's not. Okay, so your thing is more about the term being a blanket term, right? For right. it shouldn't be a blanket. Like, term. is this speeding? You can still break. No, up I mean I turned without my turn signal right. on. That's not speeding. It's a driving infraction. It's not okay. speeding. Okay, maybe a careless and imprudent. Maybe that that's what these. That's, right. Maybe that's what some of these things should be labeled: careless right. and imprudent. No, it's just a right. CNI. She didn't cheat, but <laughs> <laughs> she got three CNIs right. out. She's <laughs> one more point careless on that license. And imprudent and she's, is what she was. She's yeah. done. Ah. Uh, but I wanted to ask you real quick. Did you watch the game last night? A little bit of it. Not much. Okay. Did you see the hit? Did you see the protester get hit? Yes, by Bobby Wagner. <laughs> yes. My God. Okay. You didn't see the snow cone? I was watching 90 Day. Although, let me just say. I was I mean, watching Bo- 90 Day. I, I didn't even catch that. <laughs> Which, by the way, I want to post that picture that you sent me. Go for it. Because I said you'd watched it before. And you said, no, this is a new one. But if you look at your TV, it's already red all the way through. Then my girlfriend watched it before. But it said on So there, your girlfriend watches 90 Day Fiance, waits for you to come over, then re-watches no, because, that but, thing? No, because I don't really know how YouTube TV works. But when I pulled it up, it said recorded one hour ago. Like, yeah. it had just been on. And I was with her for the hour before that, so neither of us had watched it. I don't know. Oh, so maybe he just it was still on the channel, but he rewound it and watched it from the beginning? I, I don't no, know. I've never I just, used I it. Clicked, I'd show yeah, that. I no. clicked on it and pressed play. I board. use it. No. So you I can mean, tell somebody's watching. I mean, that. it said recorded an hour ago, and I know she didn't watch it an hour. So ago. was it a new episode? Are you yeah, recording reruns? Okay. Well, so you didn't see this hit? No. I, I mean, busy. we've all seen someone run down on the field right. at a sporting event before, and we've seen him, sh- you know, get chased around by security and get. But to get hit by an NFL player, I'm sure that they would probably tell you, like your agent or the team or someone would say, "Hey, you know, leave that to security." But I didn't hear that anyone was like mad at him or no, that this guy was going to try. And I was sue. watching the Manning version of it. Okay, mm. and so they cut away from the guy. Like that's been a thing forever. Don't give him press. Don't give him press because then more people do it. Cut away from it. Don't let them get whatever message it is they want to get out. Right? Yeah. Don't let them do that. So they cut away from it. But Peyton was like, "Well, we can show it. Show God. Show the guy." Show the guy, and then you can tell he's like, I know, the A team's not supposed to show it, but we're the B team. We can show it, can't we? And then Eli was like, uh, oh, man, this is amateur hour. The guy's got a shirt on. It's supposed to be, if you're going to do this, do it naked, full on naked. So they were talking about it, and then they were talking about Bobby Wagner's hit on him. I mean, he, he smashed him into the turf. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, he, and obviously this guy's not a football player. I don't know what he was protesting. He had a pink, Shirt on and pink smoke flare. Now, that is something I did think about. And I know it's just the sign of the times. And But when I saw Bobby Wagner, there was guys there. Bobby Wagner and somebody else. Uh, Yeah, they said it was uh, McKinsley. Okay, I don't know who it was. But you'd know. um, Bobby went, but I did see the pink smoke, and I was like, yo, what if that's poisonous or something? I did think about that. Like, maybe that's why... I'm not saying Bobby Wagner's life is worth more than a security guard, but I'm saying a security guard should be trained to deal with that a little bit more than a football player. Like, maybe a security guard would think before he ran into the pink smoke and tackled him 
this, you know, hey, we've been trained on this maybe some sort of substance. Yeah. But it ended up not being it. But I will be honest with you. That's like, I would have never thought of that 15 years ago. No. I would have never not. thought that pink substance. All I could think of was like. Or that it might blow up. Or anthrax. I don't know what the hell it is, right? Right. Or what's going on somewhere else. Maybe he's diverting our attention. Right, I, yeah. I have no idea. But I've never seen a football player tackle a protester or a streaker like that before. It used to be. Thought, it used to happen man. and people didn't get mad. Like where the players remember, would do it? Uh, if or where streakers if would you, do streak? I think if you look up when I was, you know. I, I don't know if I was old enough to see her in person, but certainly have recollections of it in my brain, so I must have seen videos. But Morgana the Kissing Bandit. Morgana was a woman, like Marlon's man. Okay. And she was a woman who would go from stadium to stadium, baseball, I think, primarily, at least that's where I can remember seeing it, and she would jump on the field and run to the pitcher and kiss him. And the pitchers would always stop and kiss her. She was Morgana the Kissing Bandit. Why? Well, had no that idea. was just a thing that happened. Was she pretty? Was she? She was like a blonde-haired mom-looking lady. Okay. Okay. She was known for having giant cans. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she sounds hot. I don't, I don't know. You'd have to look at her. I'm yeah. not saying that she's super hot. <laughs> she's what you know, She looked me. like most people's moms if their moms had giant cans. But you're saying like when she jumped down on the field, no one. No uh, one stopped. They'd be like, oh, yeah. and the TV would be like, Morgana's here. And then she'd run on the field and the pitcher would stop. He'd kiss her and then move on. Yeah, I think if you got dared to streak or just jump down on the field and run know, let across me look up. the Is field there anything about in the Morgana? 90s or all the way through the 90s. Uh, there's a Wikipedia article for it. Morgana. Really? Morgana Roberts, entertainer, became known as Morgana or uh, the Kissing Bandit. There you go, see? Baseball and other sports in 1969. Yeah, so it was before my time, but I can remember videos of it. Well, it says here, years active, 1969 to 1999. Wow. Okay, so there you go. Man, well, see, there you go. Though She cut off right before September 11th. Right, You've yeah. only got a couple of years here. Because after that, she if did you did anything like that, you went to jail. Cans, you're right. Yeah, I, that's I don't what know. she was known for. She'd come running on the field and... You know, I mean, maybe it's not woke, but you'd see her breasts bouncing, and <laughs> it was a different time. And then she'd run up, and the pictures would be like, oh, wow. And then they'd give her a kiss, and she'd run off the field. Oh, there are tons of pictures of baseball players, like, w- arms open. Yeah, welcoming her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at those dolphin shorts. Man, it's looking good, looking good. Morgana. Well, there you go. That was a Lazlo fact. There you right. go. That's your Lazlo fact. Today. All Whatever right. happened to her, does it say? Let's find out. She got There's a picture of her where she's old here. I think it's her. Yeah, it says, uh, her, you said her real name was Morgana, Morgana Roberts, Morgana Roberts. Right? Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, There's another picture here where is, she looks older. So she's still alive. Is an entertainer. Okay, so she's so still, still alive. alive. I guess she retired in 99. Here you go, Laszlo. I'll show you. This is, I think, fairly recent. That's what she apparently looks wow. like. Wow. Yeah. She got a cream of Jabbar one time. What do you mean? She got him. She kissed him? Well, it says, yeah, one of her uh, most notable victims. Victims as in, you know, she kissed him. It says Cream of Duel. Wait, Dubois. those aren't her actual boobs, are they? She got Nolan Ryan, Pete Rose, those, like, George those, Brett. Those aren't her actual That's what I remember. That, are, are, yeah. those actual, are those her boobs, Snow Cone? Like, are you seeing pictures where yeah, they're like that? Yeah, I saw like that picture, that? yeah. Is that her? Or is that yeah. like, is she wearing like a costume? I can't tell because no, the picture's taken her. from a distance. Okay. Wow, man, oh man, oh man. Did your dad, she is that the kind lives, of thing where your dad make you turn? She now like, lives oh. in Ohio and no longer grants interviews. Uh, made an exception for the 50th anniversary for her first kiss with USA Today in 2019, but she reaffirmed her, reaffirmed her retirement. All right. She, uh, her first kiss was uh, Pete Rose, 1969. Not bad. Nice. Not bad. Morgana. What if that was your grandma? She was an exotic dancer in Las Vegas, oh, Oklahoma yeah. City, and Houston. She was making $10,000 a week at one point. What? Doing what? As a dancer? Yeah, as Morgana, the kissing band, traveling, doing that stuff. Man, it's that guerrilla marketing, right? right. you got to get out there and get your name out there any way you can. And up until at least 2001, I think, running on the field was probably a slap on the wrist for her. It apparently wasn't even that. I mean, if she's running out there and they're actually kissing her, I don't think she was getting in any trouble. Hell, they might have seen her coming. They're like, hold on, stop. Here comes Morgana. (laughs) If you run out there now, I think you at least spend the night in jail. Oh, for sure. And you probably have to go to court. Go to court, yeah. The whole thing. And they might get mad at you. Yeah, you might. it might be a felony. Be banned from the stadium for life or NFL games. Yeah, that's true. for sure. Yeah. Uh, At 22, Morgana married Bill Cottrell, an accountant from Columbus, Ohio. The two met at the World Series. All right. Where she was going to jump in, and he offered to help do her taxes. Nice. And she said, her quote was, hey, if the guy's going to save you money, you might as well marry him. <laughs> the, church. the Church of Laszlo. What are you doing? You're looking for sports to bet on? I just opened another app, and I was like, whoa, there's 
thirty nine dollars mm-hmm. in there. I didn't know I had. I haven't even signed up. There's still like three of them I haven't even signed up for yet. What I really don't like, and I hope that you know, when we get sponsored by one, because I don't want to say if I can't imagine. But why when we're still we get not. sponsored by one, I hope it's not one. That's difficult to log into. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, There's sure. a couple of them. It's like some just seem easier than the others. I'm like, password? I don't know a password. I can't believe we're not sponsored by one yet. I know. I thought that would have happened already. They came and they said, hey, do you guys like to do this? So what about a sponsor? And we said, absolutely. That was well, the only ones using it. I know. We talked about it right I time. actually had someone from a morning show in this building who has a sponsorship by one and says, hey, uh, what is your parlay this week and i listened to you guys in the afternoon i've never bet it before yeah but the way you guys talk about it makes it sound so fun <laughs> right i'm like well blah! forget it what <laughs> jesus christ yeah it's not happening by the way i mean no. we could openly discuss it at this point i don't think it's gonna happen but just in case i'm uh, you know what it is gonna happen it's gonna it happen is. i think yeah, if nothing else snow cone will get it done right well, he's yeah, got done. friends in high places he's got yeah, friends yeah. in the sports yeah, world damn right dallas fort worth already checked in somebody from vegas uh coronado island which is always exciting i don't think we're gonna get anything from the dakotas for a while our boy turned himself in to go to prison isn't that right yeah but how long we don't know how mm. long he's prison gonna be is long yeah jail mm. is like want something but when you say i've turned myself in to go to prison yeah that's a, you know that's You're usually, doing some time. Yeah. I don't know. I've never. I mean, you know, no, I've never heard of like a three month prison stay. Yeah, a lot of that stuff they just keep you in. You it's know. you just go to county or whatever. Yeah, county like, jail. Hey, go to this jail. It's three months. If they're no. if you go into prison, I assume it's for a year. Yeah, a year or more. Three sixty five. Yep. Yeah. Uh, is it cheating? Lazo already said no. I don't believe so. Even though he doesn't know any of the uh, questions, I don't here. need to know the details. People voted on whether or not these things are cheating. So now we'll know. It's not just what you think, Lazo. It's what the general public thinks. A lot of people are wrong about a lot of things. Well, that's true. That's true. So we're going to go through these quickly. This is the first one. Your partner has been in a coma for months, and they might not wake up. You sleep with someone. Is it cheating? No. Now, that's sex. Yeah, but still. you always say it's not sex. That's sex. Yeah, but still. They're in a coma. Anything that happens in a coma stays in a coma. I don't mean to downplay, like, because I'm very... The Three months, maybe, you know, I don't know. Like, where'd you meet this other person to sleep? Like, maybe you're moving on quick. Is that what we're worried about here? Because that seems like, what is the... Then what is the expected time to wait for someone in a coma? Is it like while you were sleeping? It's like the brother? Maybe it's like the sibling of the person who's in the coma? I'm just saying there has to be a time. Right. That's the, That must be the issue here. If you're in a coma for a day... And you're like, hey, you're in a coma, so I slept with your buddy. That's weird. Right. But, but if you're like, I was in a coma, she was in a coma for five years. Right. And can you, So what's the right amount of time? And can is you break three up months? with someone? Is it six months? Is it nine months? Because obviously you can't tell the person you're breaking up, but I do think there should be some sort of like kind of go-to, hey, anything longer than this is above and beyond, because as society, you know, we've all agreed that they're in a coma for X amount of time. It's kind of agreed upon that probably time for you to start thinking about Moving on, you know? It doesn't mean you can't check on them. doesn't mean that well, you're not wishing it, the best. You know, but, but that's probably also hard if you're trying to, you know, uh, start a relationship with someone else. Yeah, like, hey, I really love you, but my ex-boyfriend's in a coma, and I go visit, visit him. him every Thursday. You're I don't like, think you well, do you really love yeah, me? I guess do you I like the guy in the coma more? That's... What happens when he comes out of the coma? It just seems like too many red flags. If I were a guy to be like, well, I just start down this path to relationship city with you. I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. Seems like a lot. So at that point, maybe you just, you know. You never think about that when someone's in a coma. You don't think about the partner and what, you know, what's going to happen with them. I'm always worried about the coma. How, why the hell can't they get the person out of the coma? What happens well, when you're in a coma? Is it scary? Oh, my God. I hope this never happens to me. Pull the plug, Laswell, immediately if I'm yeah, ever in a course. coma. But Sal from Vegas checking in. There we go. 41% say it's cheating, which means the majority of people say it's not cheating. I'd like to point out that this was posed as that your partner is in a coma for months. It doesn't say for months. years. Months. And the majority of people said that's not cheating. Nah. So, I don't know. Maybe it tells you a little something about the people that were voting on these things. But I like I like, Why? I like it so far. Well, I'm saying, like, saying they're, they're, not bad over, people? they're not goody two-shoes, huh? It's not like over the top that everything's cheating. You get those people where everything's cheating. No, that's cheating. That's cheating. This is cheating. Come on. Let's, let's be realistic here. Put yourself in the position of one of these people, if you can, and say, is it cheating? I think there's a lot of variables, as you pointed out, Lazo. But yeah. a few months, no. you know, I, 41%, that's... That's that's fine. I would expect forty percent of people at least to be like, yeah, it's cheating. You got to stay with them forever. It also depends on your situation with that person. Yes, how long you've been together? Are, are you, you eighty along? and you've been right. married for sixty five years? Well, yeah. then yeah, it's a problem. Have you been dating for three weeks? Bah. Bah. 
I get it. I totally right. get it. Although I also, if the old man has been with her for 60 years, and he's like, look, it's been a year. I'm not, I don't have a long time to live. You know, this, I get it, I but like, I'm just okay. saying there's different circumstances I get it. There. I, to- I totally get it. All right, having sex with someone else was actually one of the questions. Well, that's cheating. Is having sex with someone else cheating? 99% said yes. I don't know if 1% clicked the wrong button. Or well, they could or say, like, like hey, we have a relationship where it's not. Right. Then that's Which is fine. Oh, totally different. That's then all this cheating. stuff was off the table. Yeah. Uh, sliding into someone else's DMs and getting a little flirty. Is no. that cheating? No. 62% say it's cheating. More people oh, say that's stop. cheating than having sex with someone when your partner's in a coma, <laughs> which is surprising to me. That's ridiculous. 62% say it's cheating. Now, I know, Lazo, you would say, though, that it's... Uh, Potentially, it could be problematic. It could be that you're not happy with it. It could be grounds for a breakup or divorce, but it's not cheating, right? And if it were a false state, you know, you go to get a divorce, that wouldn't be false. You couldn't say he was cheating. I wouldn't think so. No, 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 he wasn't cheating. He was damning, talking someone on the internet. That's not that's not cheating, right? I think legally speaking, that shouldn't qualify as cheating. Morally speaking, yeah, morally, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's a cheater. Morally, I'm with you that it could be like you know. Problematic or sure, whatever. It could be, you know, grounds you're being for dishonest. Divorce, right. Yeah, you're hiding things, whatever. But it's not cheating. Watching porn is cheating. Lazo? No. 8% say it, it is cheating. Well, now, there's no one else there. I know. but There's literally no one else there. You're having an orgasm without your partner. So it's is, masturbating cheating? That's hurtful. Well, I assume that's what they're talking about. You're watching porn and masturbating. Well, right? what I mean, if you're not watching porn? You're just uh, thinking of people in your head. That, I don't know. Actually. What if you're thinking about your partner? Yeah, I wonder how many of those people would say that that is uh but Is that, that cheating if you masturbate and think about your partner? Yeah, well, what the percentage of people is that would so say So now you, uh, you dictate what I think about while I masturbate because we're dating. Okay, well, let's... So it's just, really? That's where we're at? That's, that's right. what we're saying. You dictate what I think about while I masturbate because we are in a relationship. Yes. That is some controlling stuff. Well, welcome to the world of relationships, Lazo. But that is control. It's, Would you not uh, say that's controlling? Of course. And I, I know that they have these characters in movies and stuff, but I find it very hard to believe that these people actually exist. Unless it's for some sort of religious thing. I can't imagine someone saying, like, you looked at porno? What? Oh, my God. I'm maybe disgusted. if you're I'm... really religious, maybe. But then it, wouldn't, it still wouldn't be cheating. It's not cheating, no. It would be like, hey, you're doing devious things that right. I don't agree with or I don't believe in, right? It's not that you cheated on me. It's that you're looking at porno, and that's a problem. That's a problem. If that's the case, then that's fine. Like, if you right. guys got into that relationship and you knew that you were both religious and someone looked at porn and that bothers you because you feel like it's a sin or whatever, you're allowed to be upset about that, of course. But it's not cheating. Right. And I, I may just, be cheating on God. I don't know exactly know how it all I'm works. I'm not sure either. But I've never dated anyone who had an issue with porn where they're like, you know, you don't look at porn. Do you? you don't look at porn often. Never, like, none of that. I've never come? counted that. No. You ever date anybody who cared if you looked at porn? No, no, no. definitely not. Uh, hanging out with an ex without telling your significant other, is that cheating? No. No sex, just hanging out. No, but it may be grounds for uh, a breakup. 34. Again, right? It's not cheating. It's just hanging out with someone that you know you don't want me to hang out with, and I didn't tell you about it because I know that you're going to get pissed about it. So there's a lot of things I do like that. Like, you know, I don't know. Snorting coke in the basement when you're upstairs trying to go to sleep, right? Yeah. Like, or you know, throwing all the toilet paper out and then you know saying that I have to go to Walgreens to go get it. There's a lot of lying and uh, mischievous things going on that are grounds for complaints, but it's not cheating. Well, 34 percent of people said that it's definitely cheating. It's definitely cheating. Just going out with an ex and not telling your significant other. You just you met up. No. no, no, no. It doesn't say anything about kissing or anything. No. You just met up with them. 34% said that's definitely that's cheating. devious. Uh, how about this? Telling someone, I definitely hook up with you if I was single. Is that cheating? No. 35% say that counts as cheating. What? I would hook up with you if I was single. I mean, to me, you're saying I am loyal to this other person. If I weren't so loyal to this other person, I'd love to have sex with you. But uh, I won't. And I'm not even going to attempt well, because I'm Well, I feel like loyal. that is, I understand, I feel like that is an icebreaker. Sure. It's like, hey, if I weren't you know, married, I would have sex with you. And then that person is like, well, Me too, how long are you going to be married right. for? Right. <laughs> right? Like, you know, those. Are, that's clearly an icebreaker. Where, But at up to that point where you said it, you know, right. do I think, again, that that could lead to cheating? Yes. Sure. 
But uh, it's not cheating. Yeah, just saying I'd hook up with you if I was single. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah. hook up with you, so if It I sounds single, like you're testing the waters. Oh. I would, too. <laughs> it sounds like you're testing the waters, for sure. And if the other person says, oh, don't tease me, then I get what you're saying. Then there's the follow-up. But that's what you got to ask about. Not this initial, like, yeah, I would totally hook up with you. The next one, uh, holding hands with someone else. Now, to me, holding hands with someone else, other than the, uh, you know, have sex and... Uh, because the, the common one, I don't know exactly how to feel about. The, the Having sex with someone else is the most obvious one. But holding hands, to me, would be more concerning than someone sliding into uh, my partner's DMs, more concerning than uh, them t- telling someone I would hook up with you if I were single. I mean, the the holding hands thing, because why do you want to hold hands? hands? It's not cheating. Holding, it's not cheating, no. but to me, it's more problematic than sleeping with someone. I, I kind of think the same thing because there could I mean, be an excuse on for the sleeping. situation but right. you're like yeah i was drunk exactly. and i was at a party so and sorry. i used to date him years ago and you know what i slept with him right okay well i mean you could do the same thing for holding hands then it would be nearly as bad but if you were like uh i went to the movies with my right. ex-girlfriend we held hands the entire time i'm that, like wait that's, that's really messed why? up why <laughs> that hurts. But you really like him yeah that, that hurts. stings that's more that's that stings more than i got drunk and just had sex with this guy. You're I like, totally oh, agree. Oh, that happens. I totally and agree. Don't talk about it. I won't talk about it. Do you know him? No. Oh, shut up about it. <laughs> I did the same thing. Right? Like, it, it is what it is. There's not, like, some sort of evolutionary instinct that says, mm, I want to hold this person's hand. You know? <laughs> right. and, and, and if you're drunk, like you said, and you slept with someone, like, oh, you got drunk and you... The opportunity was there. It's like breathing air at that point. Right. You know, you just you didn't say no like you should have been that's holding like this, hands. That right. if you do that, that's intimate. that's gratuitous. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's like you didn't even get any enjoyment out of it that I know of. That right. was just you did you that. To, you wanted to make them to that happy. man. Yeah, that you really like them. So holding hands with someone else, twenty eight percent say it's cheating. Forty two percent say it depends. Again, I'm with Lazlo. That's not cheating, but it's 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 hurtful. Yeah, it's out of hurtful. all the things on the list, it's one of the most hurtful. I think it, it could potentially be the most hurtful, honestly, because sex, like you said, there's so many excuses yeah. for sex. But Depends again, on the if it was just the, if those same excuses were used for holding hands, it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. So they just said I was drunk and held hands with this guy at a bar while we watched Depeche Mode in concert. I'd be like, yeah, who cares? Right. But if they were like, I went to the art fair Amen. and walked around and looked at art and held hands with this guy, I'd be like. What? Man, that's exactly what I was thinking. Why? They're walking on first Friday in my right, imagination, whatever. walking around at art fair, and they're holding hands like on a Friday evening, you know? Right. Like, what are you doing? People see them, and they're, they're not even kissing anything. They're just holding hands. I think it's over at that point. But yeah, 20% say cheating, 42% say it depends. All right, the next one. Sharing a bed with someone, but you don't do anything. Is it cheating? Sharing a bed, but you don't do anything. Obviously, I know Laszlo's answer to this. It's not cheating. How problematic is it? Depends. I know how Snowcone feels about it. He doesn't like it when people share beds. Nope. He, th- he thinks it's inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you would know that, wouldn't you? Didn't you? Why is that? Did you share a bed with his girlfriend? His ex girlfriend. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. And then he's like, "You guys had sex. We really didn't have sex." Yeah. By the okay. way, okay. I would brag. I would brag if I had Not sex. Not at this point because you I don't brag. bother him. No. 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 Like at the time, I would have bragged, but we didn't mm-hmm. have sex. Uh, why would I? Why would I tell you like, hey, we shared a bed, but we didn't have sex? Like that's because lame. That's, no, because you give up some you of the dirt up a early. Bit, right. Like we're not idiots. But you give up together. a little bit of the guilt early. Yeah, but you give it up in case you get caught. You give up a little bit of the guilt oh, early. And I think I later found out there was like a massage involved. A massage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he told no me later there was a massage. A massage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And he that, told like, me that. why would I say that part of it is so amateur hour? Like we're all liars. Mm. So we know you come up with the, hey, I got, you know, you tell your parents you got a speeding ticket, but you'll leave out the drinking and driving. Right. Well, why do you come home and tell them you got a speeding ticket? Because you got to come clean about something. Right. That's the same thing you like, hey, I was in bed with your ex-girlfriend, but Thank nothing you. happened. Thank you. It's like, well, why did, why would I even tell him that then? Because you may find out, and now you've given a little bit that you can then uh, massage the discussion. Massage the uh, no discussion. No pun intended. I was uh, how uh, you want after that. I wasn't trying to hide it from him. I was really give, I was really trying to rub it in his face, and he really got mad at me. I didn't know that he was getting God, so mad. Can you imagine? I thought you were playing it up. Well, she was. You guys dated for like a week, and she was your ex. I thought it was funny. I yeah, don't know. Okay. Like you never slept with someone I slept with. Okay, <laughs> give me a break, Snow Cone. Uh, where was that well, one? Oh, sharing a bed. For you. Oh. Sharing a bed. Seventeen percent say that's cheating. Now, like, what would you do, Snowcone, if you found out that your girlfriend went on a work trip 
and you found out that she's, she shared a bed. If you get called and she's like, yeah, you know, Anthony's here or whatever. He's in the he's, he's sharing my room because he got what locked out of his him? hotel room. Anthony, I don't know. Okay. Uh, he, we're sharing a hotel room because he, he forgot his room key or something, but we're not doing anything. How would you feel about that? Well, I mean, obviously you'd feel uncomfortable. Sure, but if they, I mean, sharing a bed is entirely different. I mean, right, that's was, what I'm saying. Two sharing beds a bed. in the room. The then, one bed, they're sharing the bed. Yeah, no, I don't love that at all. Right, but is it enough? Like, would you break up over it? Or would uh, you just be angry about I'd it? I'd be pissed about it. Yeah. I just assume that, I mean, if you're telling me that you're sharing the bed with this person, and this person's comfortable enough sharing the bed, you must have some sort of connection of some sort. Like, no, you I don't feel that way at all. You don't? If they share a bed? Like, if, you, if, at all. if your partner was out of town for a work thing and she was like, hey, uh, you know, just like this, got locked out of his room or whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to let him sh- sleep and, in my bed. Yeah. And Tony's crashing with me tonight. You're and I wouldn't it? be like, oh, God, no. Well, only 17% say it's I cheating. I really wouldn't. I, I think I most wouldn't. of these people think everything is cheating or anything that's worth breaking up I mean, up I'd be much cheating, more so. interested in what happened if she got back from her work thing and we went out for drinks with her friends. And they were like, you know, Tony crashing her bed or whatever, right? right? Didn't tell you? That'd be like, oh, and didn't tell me. But if she was just like, he crashes, idiot, uh-huh. doesn't have the key to his room, he's yeah. drunk, he's going to sleep in my bed. I wouldn't be like, okay. I, I just wouldn't, you know. Well, I'm not that kind of guy, though. I'm not a guy who really gets jealous. Seems like a lot of people agree because only 17% said that it's cheating. Uh, hooking up with someone when you're on a break. Now, I don't understand how this is Well, that's not even cheating a question. at all. Right. Hooking up with someone else when you're on a break. 32% say it's cheating. 35% say it's a gray area. If you're broken up, then it's not well, it cheating. Well, didn't say breaking up. Said on a break. Right. That's a break. Like we're broken up a right break. now. Well, so if we we're get back break. together, then it was a break. But if you stay broken up, then you're well, just broken that's up. That's the thing. It, it sounds to me like they decided in advance this is a break. We will get take back a break. together. Like we you will. Know, but get when back you together. take a break, we'll take it's a like break, let's see if you take a break. I get it. I get it. I understand. I'm just saying that sounds like the way that's phrased. Yeah, but still, what are you taking a break for? Taking a break is to see if you want to get back together. Right. Taking a break is like I'm going to live my life without you for a small amount of time. It's an easy way out of a without you. That means that I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, because we're on a break. It's not like we're just not going on as many dates. You know, we, someone has said right. we're on a break. To me, that means let's break up. If we really miss each other and want to work this out, then we can figure that out later. But for now, let's just call it. I'm sorry, but quits. Temporarily, at least, you're yeah. calling it quits. And you're putting we're that out like, maybe maybe we'll date again. I don't know. But that's a break. 32% say cheating. 35% say gray area. Flirting with someone. For, oh, sorry. Flirting with a cute barista at Starbucks. Is it no. cheating? No. 26% say it's cheating. I'd like to talk to these people. Giving someone a massage. Here you go, Snow Cone. Yeah. Is it cheating? Giving, uh, they, they talk about how we need a little more context, which I totally agree. Yeah. But, uh, giving someone a massage. I just assume that you're not a masseuse. And you're it's giving not someone cheating, a but now you're getting into physical contact. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. And like, did the shirts come off? Like, and did why you... did you just give that person a massage? That's like right. holding hands, only hornier and like does a shoulder rub like ah oh, my back hurts right here can you, that is that a massage right or am i at work and there's somebody walk by like i've been working for like 18 hours straight in a cubicle staring at a computer and does one of my work partners come over and massage my shoulders that's not cheating at all right that's like are we counting that that's right i don't know you know what is it where am i and what's the massage well 22 percent say it's cheating no matter the context I can't imagine that. S- sending someone else revealing photos like i can't it's not cheating i can't even imagine that all the time it's problematic yeah, no, I've, I mean, what, if, especially if you know each other. Like, I yeah, and like, again, other, like, like you're working, you guys are, you know, and somebody's like, it'll be okay, it'll be okay, well, whatever. Right, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Sending someone else revealing photos, is it cheating? No, but problematic, probably. 94% say it's cheating. 94% of people are wrong. Hugging someone very closely and very slowly, that's what it <laughs> says. So it's a long, creepy hug, I guess. Hugging someone very closely and slowly. Yeah. 14% say cheating on that one. Mm. I've never heard of a relationship that was having problems because of a long, slow hug. Like, man, she hugged him, but I, it was a long hug. It was a slow hug. This has never come up ever. You've heard of this? How, no, but how long and how slow? <laughs> right, but it's just it's not something. I remember, like, there was no kissing. They just hugged for a long time. Scrolling through Tinder when you're bored, even though you're with someone. No, is that cheating? No. 47% say it's cheating. Uh, and if you message them. No, but that them, just ain't me looking. They're, you're looking. And if you I'm message them, like, you know, eh. I'm bored, and maybe there's something else out here. Just know it's problematic. Yeah, keep my eyes open. Yep. Uh, if you message, then it goes up to 87% who said it's cheating. And then finally, kissing someone on the cheek, does that count as cheating? No. 7% say yes, but 73% think that kissing on the lips is definitely cheating. 3% think it's cheating when two actors have to kiss. Two actors. For a play or a movie. Uh, yeah. Same people who don't like porno. Exactly. 
The Church of Laszlo. Doom scroll in a minute, kid. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Get you all caught up on the news. Your uh, uh, favorite country, North Korea, the one that, you, I mean, I don't know if it's your favorite country, but you've I seen the documentary. The you rooted for them in the Olympics. You got the flag or whatever, and you've sure. asked uh, Kim Jong if there's any way that you could get over there and get the, the VIP treatment like they gave those... Uh, I don't know. I don't even remember that documentary now. Did did both of those guys choose to go over there, yeah, or they were, were they captured guys. and they then walked over? Okay, they walked right. They're like, yeah. let's just go over there. And like, right now, yeah. now you're staying, and they get the VIP treatment, which I would think is an American. They give you because you get to report back. To you home. just have to make uh, <laughs> propaganda movies. Which, yeah, I mean, come on. How you get to be an actor is another yeah. way of putting it. You get to be a movie star. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're in the news, and they brought them food all the time. They were very provocative. Actually, they're in the news twice. And uh, Herschel Who? Walker, North Korea. And Herschel Walker is in the news. Herschel Walker, man. Yeah. That's a piece of work. <laughs> that is, man. I'm sure you guys have seen by now the story man. from the Daily Beast. You know he's running for Senate. But, uh, I mean, is it surprising? It's always surprising uh, the people <clears throat> who push one agenda. And, you know, it shouldn't be surprising anymore. But they keep pushing and pushing and talking about something. And then you realize... They're the people who did it. Of course. It's yep. unbelievable that it's just, there's so much projection in the world. It's unbelievable. Yep. It's like we've always said, like, lack of self-awareness. But it's not even that. It's, to me, it's just blatant projection. We know it exists. I don't know but, what, but it's unbelievable that it continues to happen. Yeah, and it's still hard to believe when you see, you know that it's a thing. You know that people project. I know, logically, that when I see some minister I just can't being imagine that people are that dumb. To fall for it? No, to do it, to try oh, it. Like I wonder how many do. get away with it, though. You know, who I knows? I guess plenty, get but away with it for a man, while. that Herschel Walker story. Yeah. Well, if you don't know, we'll explain it. Doom scrolling next. The Church of Laszlo. It's time to doom scroll with Slim Fast. What you don't know could kill you. Murder hornets. Corpies infected monkeys. This is Headlines on the Church of Laszlo. Yo. Yo. What's going on? We're doom scrolling, man. Are you excited? I am excited. North Korea have been shooting off rockets. And this time, well, I was going to say they've gone too far. I don't know. They shot rockets over Japan, which is apparently uh, the most provocative they've been in a very, very long time. And for these rockets to go over Japan, obviously Japan doesn't know exactly where they're headed. They just know they're headed towards them. So there were videos, lots and lots of them, uh, cell phone videos of people out on the streets as these air raid sirens start going off, which has got to be pretty scary if an air raid siren went off where i live no. i wouldn't know what that is no. it happened I in hawaii not too long ago right did it for what yeah remember uh mass text oh the yeah, yeah the air yeah yeah, yeah 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 i guess uh here you should probably get some sort of text not that they didn't they probably did too i never get the the text i think you're supposed to like you're not even supposed to be able to opt out for all of them but somehow i've on my Work phone, I would get them all the time, like the Amber Alerts, the weather things. I've never gotten one of those on my regular phone. Hmm. I don't know if it's just I, because I've had the same number for so long, but if that siren went off, I would a group know. of people that I think might be guilty. Maybe. And, and they're they like, don't send it to them. Don't send it to these 10 people because they probably have a kid. Right. Or that they just care about saving in general. Like, you know, <laughs> right, yeah. nah, 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 let's do the priorities because they're not all going to fit in those bunkers. Right. But I wouldn't know what the sound is. But yeah, uh, it was a scary moment. And then it ended up going over Japan and landing in the ocean. North Korea fired at least one ballistic missile over Japan, believed to have landed in the Pacific Ocean. This comes as nuclear diplomacy has stalled. Residents in northeast Japan had to evacuate buildings and trains were temporarily suspended. That's kind of scary. I mean, I know I've said before, too, that there is something about that where you probably feel a sense of... uh like a rush almost, and you might feel sure. a little light, but it also be quite scary, and you have no idea what's going on in that moment. I suppose even if you get a text, it probably just says take shelter or evacuate the train station or whatever. It's not going to say North Korea launch rocket. We don't know where it's headed. It just says do these things. You're like, oh, God. Right. Well, so diplomacy has been failing, I guess, the world with uh, North Korea. And speaking of North Korean diplomacy, you will recall Trump went and met Kim Jong, in that famous meeting of the minds there, sure. where they uh, would get on the train and all that and uh, took the picture there together. And I've heard there's pictures of that meeting in Trump Tower now in that sure. uh, new uh, updated bar area that someone described as a hard rock. I haven't seen it, but Laz and I are wanting to go. It would be cool. I would love <laughs> to check go. it out. And I'm guessing that, uh, and it's just a guess here, but 
there's all this stuff that's allegedly missing from Trump's administration that should be in the National Archives or should have been still uh, locked up as uh, classified. And that's obviously why there's been this investigation. And the press has been asking for more information. They want the DOJ to say, hey, what are some of the things that you're looking for? Which they already said, some of the stuff they found. Okay. I guess they want to know some of the things that they claim are missing. Well, one of the things that the National Archives says, because of this Freedom of Information request, uh, one of the things they say is missing is Obama's letter. You know, each president leaves a letter to the incoming okay. president. So Obama's letter is missing, oh. which I just thought, like, he might ripped it up and threw he it might away. He been like, screw this guy. Right. Like, I don't give a crap what he says. He's a jerk to me. I right. get it. Right. He probably threw it in the trash. Because, I mean, he doesn't like him at all. No, they and, don't like uh, each other. Right. There's no way that I would be surprised at all if you said, oh, well, he's supposed to save that stuff, but he, he didn't because he, he ripped it up and threw it in the trash. Well, yeah, yeah, I believe that. Now, the other thing that's supposedly missing are some of the correspondence, some of the letters between Kim Jong and Trump when he was president. Mm. And I, I, that I imagined when they said that stuff's missing, I'm like, go check his Hard Rock Cafe thing because I heard right, that he's yeah. got all this stuff there, all this memorabilia. Maybe if you go check Trump Tower, maybe it's behind glass there right. or something you can go take a picture with. Got some new details this morning about some of the government records that were missing from the National Archives after Donald Trump left the White House. They included correspondence between Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Also missing was the letter that former President Barack Obama left for former President Trump when he took office. The National Archives made those details public yesterday in response to a Freedom of Information Act request by numerous news organizations. Okay, I guess I understand that a lot of the stuff goes to the archives. It's all official record. I know that the president's conversations, like a lot of them, are supposed to be dic- right. dictated, if not recorded, and then that goes into some sort of permanent record at the archives. But it, I I know that the presidents leave those notes for one another, but that's not something that I would assume a president has to send over to the National Archives. It, it, I would think that there are things that you can have that are private between two politicians, you know, the former, the outgoing president, and the incoming president. And then if they want to share it and talk about it with an author who's writing a book about the former right. presidents, whatever they can. But I didn't know that stuff had to go to the National Archives. No did you? And when they're talking about missing stuff, I'm sure the press and a lot of people are thinking, like, what is this missing stuff? Probably hoping for something a little better than the missing letter between Obama right. and Trump. Now, sure. the, the Kim Jong-un stuff, sure. I don't know. Perhaps I know that he said not, I mean, he wrote me a letter. Right. It's a beautiful, did he say it was a beautiful letter or he was a beautiful man? Or right. he called it's me not going to be anything bad. He called me a beautiful man. I don't, I don't remember. And I know that he said that he wrote, but then I don't know if I rem- remember that Trump, that he, wrote, he wrote him back like they were writing letters to one another. Oh, sure. I would be very interested to see... Those I would I'm be curious. interested to see, but I can't imagine there's anything criminal. In no, it. I just no, absolutely not. I just would be interested to see that correspondence. But it, again, right. if they're you know they've got this freedom of information request, I get the nuclear thing. They were they played sure, that yeah. up. Like, well, there's stuff about other countries and sure. their nuclear capabilities, and that's classified. That sounded pretty good. That was scary stuff. But the letters between Kim Jong yeah. and and then the Obama letter, like nah, Obama's probably got a copy of that somewhere anywhere. Uh, Twitter has got an edit button. It's not available yet, I don't think. Maybe sometimes I'm not really sure because they've been rolling it out. I know that right now, I think it's only blue check marks have access to it. Can I do it? I think it's in Canada. Check to see if it's up because they said they were rolling it out in the United States. Twitter rolls out its edit button. The feature users on the platform have been clamoring for is up and running. But the edit button is only available to Twitter blue subscribers in Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Twitter says the U.S. will get it soon. Soon, yeah. Okay, so they don't say exactly when, just that soon. But I, I read another thing this morning about it that they were talking about rolling out, and they acted like, you know, check. If you've got a blue check mark, go on there and just keep looking because you should have an edit button. No edit button yet? No edit button. Does it, will it say that you edited something? Wasn't that a thing already, like where you could edit it and then it had some sort of... I think Mark they wanted to you because, changed it. It, it, because then people respond to your initial tweet. Right. And then and then you could change it so it should say edited at some right, point. Right, because it would look wrong. People are like, well, why are you saying this? Or why are you making fun of this for a typo if there's no typo or whatever it was? Did they get rid of that ability even? Was that like a temporary thing? Because that, that was Twitter, right? Okay. Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is running for Senate. And last I checked, he was endorsed by Trump. Herschel I know he's Walker a, is a former, former running back. Yep. Football player. The University of Georgia, and he's running in Georgia. He's a hero there. Yeah, and uh, he played for, what was the name of that league? Uh, the USFL. He was like the big guy who went there. That was their big Later played star. in the NFL, known for the Dallas Cowboys train. And I, I'm guessing that he and Trump have been friendly ever since Trump ran the USFL. I've just kind of assumed that that was their connection. Is that, that what their I connection no is? 
Okay, well, I know that they say that they're friends. And any time when Herschel first announced that he was going to be running this campaign, they kept referring to him as Donald Trump's friend. So uh, he's running. He's running as a Republican, and he's pro-life. Apparently, he's running on a very pro-life platform, they said, except for... Um, so you know, he did sign with the New Jersey Generals. That was owned by J. Walter Duncan to begin, but then was sold to Donald Trump. I, I just assume that's why they were well, friends. There you go. You're right. I had no idea if he knew him from that or not. Well, he's definitely Republican, and he's definitely pro-life, and I think they say in this that uh, it's very few exceptions that he would support for abortion. But his son has come out and called him a liar. His son doesn't like him. His son doesn't like him. He's called him a liar. Now well, the- now he came out and talked about, you know, deadbeat dads. Uh, right, and dads yeah. who aren't a part of the kid's life. And then that was a couple going. months ago. Yeah. And then people were like, yo, you got four kids you don't talk to. You've yeah. never talked to. And he's like, yeah, well, whatever. And it's like, oh, really? Right. That was like, that's my thing. Like this. And now the story is, if I get it correct and you can stop me, is the story is uh, he's very pro-life. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a woman now <clears throat> who says, uh, hey, Herschel Walker paid for my abortion. He got me pregnant and paid for my abortion. And people are like, well, and what I did read was like, well, how can you prove that? And it's like, well, here's a, a, a letter between the two of us, and then here is a check from Herschel Walker for that amount. And- now, Herschel Walker goes on uh, uh, Fox News with Hannity, and Hannity asks him, how do you explain the check? And he says, I give a lot of people money. A lot of people money. You give a lot of people exactly $281.53? <laughs> right. <clears throat> I, like, I was like, you, you need to call me for crisis manager, man. That, that doesn't work. Yeah. I give lots great. of people money. You give them the exact cost of an abortion? Yeah, and she was your girlfriend? Like, right, and, that's crazy. And- what what is your what 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 do you think it was for? Just because she needed some money, so instead of like you said, instead of giving her like three hundred bucks for clothes or groceries or something, she asked for some money. Yeah, it was a very exact it was for amount. Her clutch, and that's why you will see. Yeah, maybe that was it. She's like, hey, mm-hmm. this is what it costs. I need uh, I need you to pay for it. I mean, the the Daily Beast is one. That, they broke this story, and everyone's saying, you know, according to Daily Beast. But you'll see the headline from the Daily Beast, like. She's got receipts, which I mean, she kind of does. This morning, the Republican nominee for Georgia's Senate seat, Herschel Walker, is denying a Daily Beast report that he paid for his ex-girlfriend's abortion more than a decade ago. Walker is currently running on banning abortions with very few exceptions. Every time, man. And the whole dad thing. Yeah, that was a few months ago, like you said. It's like, but you know, that's the thing. It always gets me like these politicians, man. It's so... It's like really low level stuff, and 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 I get it. They they have advisors, and they probably don't tell the advisors. Uh, I understand, so I don't always blame the advisors. But if you know that you like in your head, you're like, okay, what are the things that I've done? Well, I did pay for that one girl to get an abortion when I was at the University of Georgia in 1988 or whatever. Wow, well, let's just go ahead and run on abortion. It ends at all costs. Like, you know it's out there. Right. You know it's out there. What about, well, you know what? I think dad should be more part of a family. And, and let's start talking about that. Like, really make that one of the the four, you know, right. s- staples of this chair that we're going to run on. And this was and they're like, yeah, but Hey, but I do have four kids that I don't talk that to. I don't talk to. Right. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, pick other stuff. Literally pick other stuff. Look, you're Herschel Walker. You're a legend, right? You're a black Republican guy, right? Backed by Trump. You got that going Yeah, you're going to lose a lot of your base. Right. Right? So don't pick the stuff that they could actually use against you. Right. You could leave all that off the table. And maybe she won't you talk about it. You could literally say, if somebody said, uh, you know, what are your feelings on, on women? You could say, I grab them by the P. Yeah. I'm a celebrity. Yeah. You can get and people are like, yeah, no, locker room talk. All right, Hirsch, way to go. Like, there's so many things you could say except for these two things. <laughs> and you right? demand that you say these two things. Like, why? Just draw attention to it, which I, yeah. is more likely that you're going to be out of. And this and happened in 2009, not, according and, to Hirsch. Okay. Not that long ago. Okay. Well, Fine. Ten years ago, even it's not then, like it was ancient history, and you forgot, you know. And even then, you know you did it. Yeah, man, you write a check to someone for an abortion. You know you did it. It's like you don't forget that. No, 
You know you did it. So, and you also have to know that if I start talking about abortion, now I start talking about how it's wrong, and I start talking about how nobody should get one, there is someone that I paid for to get one that I am now talking about poorly. And she might get worked up. Yeah. Right. She might go to the press. Right. Like the Daily Beast. Right. Why like, did you why? draw attention why? to it? Yeah, why do it? I don't it get it. It doesn't make any sense no. to me. And the, it's, There's it's so many different things. You like just feel like, I'm tough on crime. Right. Well, I'm Herschel Walker. I'm tough on crime. Like, okay. Yeah, maybe it never gets brought up then. Right. Maybe she never says anything, and you don't have to come out and say that you support that you're right. pro-choice. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can just not talk about it. <laughs> right. Choose other things to get worked up about. There's like a about. litany of things you can yep. get worked up about. I don't get it either. You would think those are the things you'd want. It's religious leaders, too, so many times. You know, you're like, why is that the thing that... And I get it. Like, for whatever reason, that's what people do. They project, like you said. But, man, it just seems like you're drawing a, a lot of attention to that stuff. All right. We're out of time. We are? Okay. We got to take a break. We'll come back and finish Doom Scrolling. The Church of Laszlo. <laughs> it's time to Doom Scroll with Slim Fast. What you don't know could kill you. Murder hornets. Herpes infected monkeys. This is Headlines on The Church of Laszlo. Yo. Yo. What's going on? Nothing. How are you? I'm good, man. You? I'm all right. <clears throat> Snow cone, sorry to interrupt. You're good, man. You're good. He's uh, he's listening to Westeros podcast again. I know. I'm trying to get sponsorships. Oh, is that what you're doing? Uh, Nick, his show's done, so I was watching people come on after him. And I'm trying to get that Everlights thing, man. That stuff's yeah. cool. These guys come on. They put like you know lights on your house. They stay up there all year long, Different and you can change seasons. them to like red for like Chiefs games, Christmas, Halloween, whatever. Right? So I sent that to a sale. Uh, our one sales shy. guy that I like. Which one? The one that asked the questions? Milsey, man. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Guy solid. Mm-hmm. He is. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're we're doom scrolling. Kim Part K. Three. Kim K. She's got to pay a big old fine. Why? Eh. Because I mean, it's not big for her. Right. She posted a thing on her Instagram story like, are any guys into crypto? Because you should totally check out this crypto. And then at the end it says hashtag ad. Well, it turns out that there are certain rules about advertising things like stocks and bonds. Well, I thought and, it didn't say uh, ad because it was like no, on her story. It, yeah, it was. But she put hashtag ad. Apparently that doesn't cover it. Oh, they went into it in that. this thing. Kim Kardashian is going to pay a $1.3 million fine for an Instagram story about crypto. But Kim's problem isn't that she promoted crypto regulators say. It's that she violated what's called the anti-touting provision of federal securities law. Legally, just saying that you were paid to promote a bond, stock, or crypto coin isn't enough. You- okay, so when he says that, he's showing why. As soon as a screenshot of her story and it shows at the end of that story hashtag ad okay so i assume that she put it up there no, but you have to say how much you were paid and when you were paid in kim's case she got about 250k her fine makes her pay that amount back plus a one million dollar penalty but she doesn't have to admit or deny the sec's findings you know, another good reminder that maybe you shouldn't take financial advice from a celebrity oh, you shut know up what? idiot who are you i see the ad now. you know what also okay. uh it, Maybe a good reminder that they're so busy trying to find Kim Kardashian over (laughs) an Instagram story. Well, the entire financial world plunges us into the toilet, and people's 401ks are halved, and they clearly, clearly, if not blatantly illegally, get them, but blatantly manipulate the markets to their benefit. And when people lose money, they stand on balconies worth millions and clank champagne glasses and laugh at the poor souls Get em. who didn't make enough money because they manipulated the stock market. That, to me, you shouldn't be mad. This is exactly how they do it. They make you mad at Kim Kardashian when the fact of the matter is she didn't bilk anything from you. And these mothers are bilking you every day. Every day. Right. And yet there's no fine. There's no fine. No. They lied. The banks lied about having money that they didn't have. They Who were, the they hell were lost stuff their after job hours. over all that stuff? Made off? Right. One guy? One yeah. guy. Another fall guy, by the way. And Please. that was just a Ponzi scheme. I mean... 
totally different. Kim K is yeah, taking an ad, and they're like, "Let's look into this and make a." Of a course, point I'm of talking it. about the whole. We're trying to make it look everything. Trying right, to make right. it look One like guy. we have to do with this. They got you know? bailed out and got bonuses. That was it. You know, I guess Bear or whatever went well, out they had us bail and, them out, and then the other banks all got the bailouts, and we're down to like two banks that you can choose from. Right. right? And now the statute of limitations has passed, so no one will ever be prosecuted. Right. Right. But they and ran the laws anyway. Your bank that made it through because of the bailout. That you paid for now charges you forty three dollars a month in maintenance fee. Right, maintenance to take your money and pays you a point oh three percent interest rate. Are you kidding me? Interest rates are up. Not on my money, they're not. <laughs> right, interest rates are up. Interest oh, rates. Look at that. Interest I, they look up. real low in my bank account. <laughs> yeah, they do. Just put some money in savings. Yeah, that these doesn't guys, work. man, it pisses me off. Did you see any of the stuff about the fisherman competition where they were cheating? I do like when. It- Snow cone says preach. <laughs> I don't watch the fisherman. I know you're a bit of a fisherman. Man, that guy almost got killed. Dude, I, it's scary to watch. It's scary. So this fishing competition takes place every year. These guys had been accused of cheating before. People had thought they cheated. At one point, they accused these guys, or at least one of them, and said, we're going to make you take a lie detector test. So he did, and he failed. But when he failed the lie detector test, he's like, look, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Your machine's broken or whatever. I didn't cheat. And, you know, we don't know for sure that he did it at that point in time. But there were suspicions. I don't follow this sport it closely, like so I don't know. Been, I'm kind of destroying the competition for years. Yeah. And then he's, he's always been, been suspected. Winning a lot. Yep. Yeah. So then this time around, you know, these guys, they get up there. They put their – they just put their fish in, a, like, a milk crate, and they weigh them. And they see, all right, you got the two fish. Let's see who's the sure. heaviest. And everybody weighs and see who's got the heaviest fish. So they win. But, I mean, the fish that they're holding up – presumably look a lot like the fish that the other guys are holding up, yet somehow those are heavier. So the host of this thing, after he gets done saying, all right, you guys win or whatever, look at this, you big winners, he takes the fish, puts it on the ground, cuts them open, well, they and, have decides them? To, and there's weights in there. And when he's, you got to see the video because yeah. he goes, we got weights! And when he does it, people in the crowd are, oh, another, I knew it! it. <laughs> and these guys are just standing there stoically they like, they've got to be, they've got to be pooping their pants. But yeah. they, they're not crying or anything or running like I would have been doing, yeah. both of those things. But uh, they did get caught cheating and they, I mean, the police got involved because it's like a $30,000 prize or almost. I'm not much of a fisherman. My dad and my uncle loved it. I used to just go because it was like, oh, I could spend time with them. Yeah. Yeah. And not even a, I mean, I, that sounds like me being empathetic, but it was more like they wanted to do it, so I just would go and do it, right? Yeah. My dad, my uncle, my grandpa, so it was like, okay, well, I'll just go with you. I never overly enjoyed fishing, but I did go when I did sports talk. Uh, I did go on in one of those fishing competitions when I lived in Jacksonville on the big boat where they go out and catch those things. Yeah. And I will admit, that was a lot cooler than what oh, my like dad and my uncle for the were marlin going. and stuff? Yeah, yeah, and they were like, you know, we got to catch six marlins. Somebody else just caught one that was 350 pounds. You're like, okay, this is cool. That was a cool thing, I will say. Yeah, I don't know what exactly they're fishing for in this competition. It probably says right there in the name. But, yeah, I, I fished a lot when I was a kid, but we were fishing for catfish and crappie and stuff like that. I never went out... Surprise, surprise, growing up in the middle of the country on the ocean to go fishing. So right. it was a little bit different. But, man, these guys were – I can't believe they didn't get their asses kicked. Yeah. Chase Kaminsky, Jake Runyon, weighing a big fish. This is the moment a lot of eyebrows started to go up. Anglers Jacob Runyon and Chase Kaminsky leading yet another fishing tournament. They even headed up to take their pictures at the Lake Erie Walleye Fishing Competition, ready to claim almost thirty grand in prize money. Just moments later, the event's organizer, Jason Fisher, decides to check the belly of one of those fish. We got weights and fish! There we go! Oh! <laughs> From then on, it's a new calling fell in a way only true fishermen can. Do you have anything to say, Jake? You call the cops. You call the cops. Call the cops. Did you know what that you guy's name cop. was? What? Which the guy, one? The guy that was running it? No. I Jason know. Fisher? <laughs> no, come yes, on. The, that's come not on. what he Play said. Play it again. Play Hold it again. on. I'm going to fast. Just moments later, the event's organizer, Jason Fisher. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a simulation. <laughs> they ran it's out of names. It's a simulation. It <laughs> they is. ran out of names. And, they ran, and you see them recycle them. And like <laughs> that one time I was there, they were like, Donald Trump's lawyer, Ty Cobb. I'm like, you're, you're kidding me. Right. Yeah. Well, whoever named <laughs> it, they had the last name Cobb. They just decided to name him Ty. Not a thing. Well, how could they not? Everyone's going to call him that anyway. No, not a thing. Cobb. Cobb. We no, just kept calling him. <laughs> not a thing. It's it was either that or corn on the. And so we just like, yeah, you know what? We're just going through names. I can't you guys didn't catch it's that. been like you know a hundred years, so we'll just do Ty Cobb again. It's so <laughs> ridiculous. Maybe if your name's Fisher, you're like, and then I I'm like, be a why Fisher. do I you even care about any of this? Why? None it's of it's real. Cheating or because it's a simulation? Because it's a simulation. Like none uh, of it's real. 
Well, you know, what is it? What, what is real? We're experiencing it, right? Does that make it real? I don't no. know. Where does the river stop? Where does Just it because end? you experience it doesn't make it real. Uh, anyway, Elon Wait, Musk. that's true. No, I got you. I don't even know where to begin. Like, the, the, okay. the, you're sensing something. I don't know. Elon Musk, uh, he's, he's back wanting to buy Twitter. This I know they stopped thing. trading Jesus on Twitter. Christ. Look at that. I know. You sons of bitches. I know. You're like, oh, fine, Kim Kardashian. But all of a sudden, people find out that Elon Musk said, you know what? I'll go ahead and buy Twitter. And the price starts to go through the roof. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stop you from buying that. Yeah, like, that why way. would you? Like, really? Why? Why? Well, beyond that, just like the, the, the privilege of wealth, like you're supposed to be deposed in a day or two, whatever it is. Your trial's supposed to start in a couple of weeks. You've had stuff comes out, come out that looks bad, very bad about you for this, you know, lead up to this trial. So what do you do? Like he literally, they said he doesn't want to go get deposed. And so he's like, I got to get deposed on Thursday for this whole Twitter thing. Ah, just offer to buy it again for a... $50 billion. Sure. Just offer to buy Breaking it Breaking right now, billionaire Elon Musk has reversed course yet again and is once again proposing to buy Twitter. So I guess he's offering to buy it for the original advertised price or right. whatever. And I don't know what this means for the trial because on the news they were asking, you know, what does this? We don't know yet. I'll have to wait and see. But as you pointed out, they, uh, they halted Twitter shares being yeah. sold and yeah. bought or whatever as this was announced. So I, I maybe we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, and maybe this is what Twitter wanted. I haven't been following the story that closely other than we've talked about the text messages between him. You uh -huh. know, we're talking about World the banker three, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, World War Three and all yeah. that stuff. And then he was supposed to get deposed here in the next couple of days and the trial was supposed to start. But now he says it's back on. So there you go. And the edit button. So, hey, maybe oh, that's good news yeah. if you're a Twitter fan. I don't know. The Church of Laszlo. How are you? I'm all right. Why does this keep happening? I, did you see the What's slave auction now? thing? Another one of these? Wasn't, wasn't this like a thing that was like two of these? There was, there was two or three At racist school? high school stories within a couple months of each other a couple years ago. Remember that? I know at least one of them was some sort of mock slave trade. One was a teacher had made yeah. kids pretend to be slaves or something. This is from California. So did you see this? River Valley High School in Yuba City, California, says they have thrown in the towel after viral video shows players holding a mock slave sale. The incident, which went down in the team Stop. locker room and was uploaded to TikTok, came to the public's attention last week. I didn't know about this. The video opens with the camera person entering a completely dark locker room. The lights turn on and a plethora of high schoolers are shown placing bids on three black students standing at the front of the room. Jesus Christ. Well, I have audio here. So and the turn students did it themselves? There's no teachers involved? It looks like it's just the students here. It shows three black football players in a Northern California high school locker room auctioned off by their white teammates. A shocking video was reportedly shared on social media and through text messages among students and parents at River Valley High School in Yuba City. The school district superintendent saw the video and released a statement saying the recording, quote, clearly demonstrates that the situation was orchestrated and organized and quote students spent time contemplating this terrible act without the slightest regard that this action is hateful and hurtful okay so according to this this is i'm reading this from yahoo news i don't know where it originated but they said we All should right, let add, me add, were, were the were, were the black students involved it says that they're it, act, it seems like not it that just, it matters but were they involved we should add that at least one of the students appears to have something dangling around their neck, seemingly with the purpose of signifying that the boys in question are pretending to be enslaved. Furthermore, while many... So they it must have been, because they said that the so students were, were black, all right? On it. Furthermore, while many of the teammates who yelled out prices were fully clothed, the black players pretended to be on the auction block... The black players pretending to be on the auction block were dressed only in their underwear. But they were involved in it. Yeah, it I mean, like it looks like they're along. standing there in their underwear. There's, I'm, right. there's a that changes the, the dynamic, right? Unless they felt pressured to do this by the rest of their white teammates. Right. You know, sure. I, it definitely is. It definitely is after everything, and especially the fact that you got white guys standing there in the video I'm watching. They're like pointing, and, and that looks like an adult to me. One of these guys looks like a coach. Where was this like at? an adult? California, Yuba City. Yuba City, California. It's in Northern California. River Valley High School. I need to know more about it. Look, I don't love it, so it is what it is, but I need to know more about it. Is this it. like the kind of thing that you have to teach your kids about uh, outside of school? Like, hey, uh, don't f don't get in fights and put those on TikTok. Also, don't have any type of slave auctions or you know, be racist and then post that on TikTok. Teach a little bit about what racism is if it's not being taught in schools, like how this could be a bad look. I get what you're well, saying. But let me just ask involved. you. Let me just ask you. Is there a chance... 
that the kids today are past us. Well, I don't know. That's like, is there like some sort of post-racism thing where they're like, it's okay to make fun of it because, because we fun. don't think about it like that anymore. Right. Like, you boomers, right? Right. We don't think about it like that anymore. We're actually making fun of it. And they're involved. And we're, we all are friends and love each other. And right? Like, is I'm not saying that that's the case. No, I get what you're saying. But I'm saying if I was a principal, I'd want to talk to him and find out if that... Like, are you guys seeing the world differently than we saw it? I, I'm hoping the answer is yes, right? I'm hoping this isn't just a hurtful, racist thing that where you force these uh, black kids to do this or they felt pressure to do this. And I don't know that I would ever be able to get... Uh, an answer that I felt comfortable with from those students. Right, because they could feel pressure. Right, because, right? So it's like, okay, but, well, this, like, is it a step towards post racism, which would be nice, right? Looks like this person, who is this? Someone from the district, it says, um, it just says that they're, I guess, the actual superintendent. Uh, quote, reenacting a slave sale as a prank tells us that we have a great deal of work to do with our students so that they can distinguish between intent and impact. They may have thought this skit was funny, but it is not. It is unacceptable and requires us to look honestly and deeply at issues of systemic racism. When students find humor in something that is so deeply offensive, it tells me that we have an opportunity to help them expand their mindset to be more aware, thoughtful, and considerate of others. Okay, well, you know what? That's... Uh, that's honestly, those words are kind of what I was thinking. Like, at the very least, someone needs to say, hey, we need to do a better job of teaching. Right. But could the students say, at least back to that statement, um, that's you. We're all in this together. We're making fun of the idea that you were so racist just 20 years ago. We're making fun of that idea together. Yeah, I don't right? Know. Like I don't I'm just know. saying, I, I'm not saying I'm not I don't want to give these kids that type of credit yet, but in my mind I'd like to <clears throat> that we're all friends. Nobody thinks anything worse of anybody else here. This is a we're making fun of you guys. I told you We're not making fun of these guys. We're making fun of you guys. You guys were the racists. We're making fun of the uh, uh, of how you handle these situations. We don't see it like that anymore. I mean, intent. I'm not matters. saying right. I'm not saying that that's the answer. How to be making fun of you guys though? Like, right? Like we, you know, this generation didn't own slaves. He's saying though that this generation was so uncomfortable was talking about racism they couldn't right. even have oh, fun. Exactly. You right. guys can't even have fun with the idea. Okay, I get that it. these things happened, and we are. We're having fun with the idea that these things happen because it's a for us it's post racial, and we don't. Uh, you know, nobody here dislikes each other. It's uh, all you old people who are still racist. We're not racist, right? We're talking about it, laughing about it, having a good time. I get I'm not what saying, you're saying that that's the answer. I'm not saying that that's what happened. What I'm saying is I'm hoping that's what happened. Right, right. But that's why I'm saying even and, and we can be hopeful that the, that is a situation that no one felt pressure to do this and no one felt uncomfortable. But then just go ahead and have that talk with your kids. Like this superintendent, yeah. it seems like is leaning towards like, hey, you know what? Let's just let's just assume that's not funny when we put it on TikTok because right. it, there's another thing you need to learn about today and young people, so, and they, which they should know since it's their generation that if you post something. On the internet, mm-hmm. there's a very good chance it could be taken out of context or that your right. intent is never going to get across. So we need to know how it looks without knowing what's uh, being a mind right. reader and everything else. It doesn't. Because what he says, this a is a look. good opportunity. This so, is yeah, a good, good opportunity, opportunity to, to teach, teach them about why this basically is offensive but to people. Let me just add, and I know you guys are looking at me like you got to stop, but because you're going to get us in trouble. Let me just add, we keep saying it's a good time to teach. Maybe it's a good time to listen. And, Why and did sure you do it? I'm sure they're asking. Him How that. did it happen? Uh, yeah, Why like did know. it happen? What were you looking for from that? What were the results? Like, enough. We're the old racists. Enough of us. Let's start listening a little bit. What are they saying? What are they telling us? What are they learning? How do they feel? Right, but I do see how that could also be kind of a slippery slope because you could say, well, now a kid feels pressure and they might not, just like you said, you don't know if they're telling the truth. So maybe you just don't do it. 
Maybe it's just a thing that you thought, hey, I'm not saying that you're a racist because you did this, which I think is what you're saying. Doesn't necessarily I'm mean not that you're that a you're racist. Not. I don't right. know what it is. You could be. Or I want to hear from you. Exactly. I want to hear just don't from do you. It. Just don't do it in general because we don't know. Right. You know, if the, I, I can't ever feel confident that a, a, a marginalized person sure. uh, feels comfortable yeah, with this. Is, I even if they that. say they feel comfortable, then just don't do it. Just don't right. do it. And the thought that, as you, you know, you have kids, so I'm going, your kid's younger, so you got a ways to go, but the yeah. thought of like, I, I got to imagine it stresses you out. Not necessarily even something racist, just something, a video of something that you hear about the people, the parents at school talking about. Oh, did you hear about this video that's going around about kids calling this girl fat or, call, you know, whatever right. it is. And then you find out that your kid's involved. Not just the, 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 I, the amount of time I feel like I would spend time with my kids, just don't, just don't do anything. <laughs> because there's a very good chance that well, it's going to be recorded. Really have it's like to, constantly being um, recorded. I, I've had world a world. conversation with my kids, and I'm like, look, man, it is really easy to bully kids. It's really easy to bully them, and you not even know that you're bullying them. You think you're just having a good right. time, but they're not having a good time with you. But maybe they pretend that they're having a good time. So you're like, oh, we're all buddies or whatever, right? Like, you don't know what's going on. So, you know, here's the thing. If anything comes out of your mouth that you think 10, 15 years from now you'll feel bad about, don't do it. Yeah, just don't say it. Like, literally put yourself in your shoes like, oh, man, 15 years from now I can look back on this and I did this to this kid. Well, right now, it all looks like it's fun, right? But 15 years, reverse that thought and just go ahead and do it. Because I know I've made a million mistakes. It's, you know, you just have to tell your kids, like, don't, don't do what I did, right. right? Like, I made all those mistakes. I made fun of kids, you know? Kids made fun of me. I picked on them. I, I did everything I could to try to survive. Don't do that. Don't be that kid. And, and your kids also might already feel like they kind of live on film, like it's the real world and that they're constantly potentially being reported because feel, we are. So I do feel bad for them for that. Yes, but maybe that also, maybe them being I aware like of it. The head, so they're like, there's this thing going on, doesn't matter, but there's this football thing. And they said, you know, uh, the head guy where the kids get recognized. And he texted me, good for him. He said, how do you want me to address you as a coach? And I was like, just use my last name, because what I don't want to do is distract from them. And I'm not saying I would. Right. But what I don't want is that. I don't want parents to, because it does happen. Parents do look at my kids differently. I've watched it happen because of the things I say. Yep. They will judge them. And I, always, I never want my kids to be, uh, you know, uh, crucified further by the right. sins of the father. Yeah. Right. But I also tell them every time, look, we also get good things because of it. So, look, there are going to be parents who say that their kids can't hang out with you. There are going to be people who stay away from us. You're not going to actually, there'll be times when we're out and you won't even really realize why people are being rude to us, but it's because of this. But also, you get free we tickets get a suite stuff. at Sporting KC <laughs> yeah. games. If we want to go see Weezer in their town, we can, right? If, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, we get Diamond Club seats to the Royals. If we want to go see a Chiefs games, we can. Like, yeah, that's it. Sorry, but this is the life you were given. Yeah. And it, it, it comes with ups and downs. Yeah. And now just uh, re- imagine that you're being uh, recorded at all times. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you see anything involving slave auctions, yeah, just and it's not a history lesson in school, yeah, I would just walk out of that room. Get out of there quickly. Mm-hmm. The Church Shot Laszlo. Yo. Yo. You good? I'm good. You? I'm great, man. I'm glad to hear it. Well, something you don't have to worry about. Two things you don't have to worry about. Mm-hmm. One, I think you already knew you didn't have to worry about, which I'll get to. But the first one, I saw that Gen Z is trying to play a prank on uh, the boomers. Oh, really? With something called the Porcelain Challenge. I just sit in this world of Gen X where I go, God. Well, you've got kids, though, that are you know on TikTok. They yeah, might they be aware are, of this. Right. That they could keep you... Uh, on your toes, I guess, at times. I am a little bit because at certain times they'll be like, okay, boomer. I'm like, I'm not a boomer. Right. Yeah, there is that. And and right. sometimes I think like... I your hear aunt's the, a boomer. I'm not a boomer. Save it. Or when you hear, okay, boomer, and you go, yeah, I get him. But you're thinking like, I agree with the boomer, but I'm not going <laughs> to tell them right. that. Like, woo, yeah, let's go ahead and direct that. And then I made the mistake one time being like, I don't think it's great that we just keep saying, okay, boomer. Like, that's awfully dismissive. That did like, bother what? me about you. I was like, you. okay, I never mind. Never mind. That. Okay, boomer. Okay, that was boomer. me who attacked you. I was <laughs> like, yeah, we can say that. Uh, so this hey, people is- who have listened to the show for a long time know that I always side with the younger generation. Always. 
So this always. is always people are like, oh, it's the greatest generation ever. I'm like, man, you raised the boomers. They're a bunch of dicks. Like, I just watch saying that. I just there's some a uh, stand up special where someone was talking about they that. They stole my bit. Your, well, it wasn't exact, it, but they were talking about the different generations. I'll remember it here in a second. The porcelain challenge is a TikTok challenge that turns out not to be true. This is where you take your parents or your grandparents porcelain. Their dolls, their plates, their any type oh, of Oh, your porcelain mom has stuff porcelain ever. dolls. Yeah, she has porcelain right, so stuff. So I take all her porcelain the dolls, then what do I do to you, it? You take porcelain stuff, their vases, whatever, you break it. Yeah. And then you smash it up. And Snow Cone can show you how to get into a nice fine powder it? with a dollar bill and a, all right, and a credit card. Well, I mean, like you taught me that, like the, the yeah, way okay. to do it. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and then you snort it. You snort it on video. And so, porcelain is, uh, does it get you high? Uh, no, no. But I think the idea is in the video, you're supposed to be making your parents or your grandparents think that, yeah, we think it gets you high. It's shocking. Do that. It's shocking. Like, and you're breaking I can't believe stuff. that you're breaking stuff and snorting it. What is wrong with these kids? Well, they're not actually doing it. They're doing it to try and freak out boomers and try and get them to fall for it, apparently. Uh, the hoax made it all the way to Fox News and CNN. I guess they covered it, both of them. Ultimately, uh, it says um, there was a Fox News article screenshot that apparently was also part of the trend. I don't know exactly if they were trying to get these uh, stories to make it to Fox News or what, but the original guy, I don't know how to pronounce his name here, he set it up and it's, it's, it's not a real thing. So... There are plenty of those TikTok challenges where I go, this isn't real, is it? And then I can't tell if it started off real or not, right. but it has become real. Like the tear up the bathroom or whatever. What was that called? Levious Dick. Devious Licks. Devious Licks. Le- Levious, Dicks. Levious Dicks. Man, oh man. Those Previous Devious Dicks. Dicks. That's you before you Pre- were married. Right. Previously on Dicks. Uh, so, Previous Dicks was everything before you became straight. <laughs> they haven't said anything about anyone Sometimes, actually doing this. So if Previous Dicks. I would be worried, though, if I had kids that, you know, they fall for this stuff. Like, hey, this wasn't even meant. This was started by someone your age as a prank. And now I know it's it's gotten popular, but it, right. it's not real. I'm like, no, it is. And you're like, oh, You can it. always tell My it, kid's though, the kid who bit. really snorted the porcelain. Like, you right. know, your you kid But my kids were like, I mean, when we, we, we talked about the Devious Licks, I did bring up to my kids like, oh, yeah. Kids are ripping stuff off of the bathroom walls. Like, that was a real one. Right. Yeah. I was like, are you guys doing that? Not that I care, but. And I was like, oh, yeah, Levious Dicks. Let me tell you guys. <laughs> yeah, you're about like, this. boy, let me tell you. It's a real thing. Let me tell you about previous <laughs> dicks, boys. I've, I've had one, I've had a million. Come uh, over here at Uncle Slim Fast. And another thing that's not real, which we already knew because this has only come up about a dozen times over well, the course of the last tired. two years. I don't know. They're all different. That's the no. You've had those before. I don't know. Those are the exact same ones you've had before. I'm saying. Uh, this Tennessee state center. She's clearly getting her news from Facebook memes. Mm. She goes, whatever. The, what's the capital of Tennessee? Anybody? Nashville. Uh, Frankfurter. I don't know. It's a good question. I knew it sometime <laughs> in high school, but she's I'm sitting in the, Nashville. It's Frankfurt, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, that sounds right. It is Nashville. Nashville. What about right. Kentucky? Is that Frankfurt? That sounds it's like right. one of those that's like confusing. Frankfort. Frankfort? Yeah, well, that's how it's spelled, Frankfort. I mean, it's one word, but I'm sure they but call it Frankfort. But it's spelled Frankfort? I thought it was Frankfort. F O R T. Frankfort? I thought it was Frankfort, yeah. yeah well, I'm that's, sure that's how they say it. Well, maybe they don't. Maybe I just remembered it wrong because yeah, I would have spelled it with a U for sure. Yeah, me too. But this uh, state center in Tennessee, she's in Nashville at the Capitol, talking to her colleagues about things that need to be addressed, and this stupid thing comes back up. Unfortunately, I'm hearing this in my rural districts where um, maybe schools are not fully disclosing that they are allowing children who identify as snakes, cats, (laughs) whatever. Shut up. They're providing litter boxes. (laughs) Shut up. Why would they be giving litter boxes to snakes? (laughs) There's no such thing as a house-trained snake. I really honestly... Am one day going to run for something? <laughs> well, run for it. I, honest Tennessee. to God, in Overland Park, I don't know what. I need you to look for the next thing that's unopposed. Okay. <laughs> so that I can win. Because I just want to be somewhere in politics where I have the ability to say, shut your mouth. <laughs> right, when someone says Like, I don't that. know what it is. Like, if it's a state senator or senator, I don't know. But I want to be like, lady, shut up. That's what I want to do. Like, stop it. Nobody's self-identifying as a cat. There's no cat boxes in your kid's bathroom. Shut up. Shut up. Well, the school had to say it. Or the school districts. The school districts had to come out and say, no, we what have not given students. What am I running for? Do you have the Kansas I, elections up? Let me look. We have not given any students I got 20,000 votes as sheriff. 
Which, by the way, looking back at that and what that douchebag's done, I bet you wish I would have got about 60 more. Ooh, I don't know what he's done, but you're talking trash on the sitting oh, sheriff? Oh, he was the guy who went back and said, oh, the elections are fixed and all that. I didn't know that. Yeah, you would have liked to have had me as sheriff, believe me. I don't like to not make Sheriff angry as long as they're Yeah, well, you know what? Sheriff doesn't like me me to be angry because I actually put my name on that ballot and I'll beat his ass. That's true. (laughs) We can do a runoff, sir. I'm just saying, I I want to make sure while I'm in the state of Kansas that uh, the sheriff knows what you look like and that I haven't said anything bad about the sheriff yet. I will beat him in an election straight up. What were you looking for? Something for him to win? Yeah, something for me to start running. When is the election day? Uh, Well, there's one coming up like in a a couple weeks, right? 55 of the state's 125 House seats are already decided because only one candidate filed for the seat before last year. Well, you just got to file for something. No, file. we can just do write in. Okay. Find me something to write in. What's on the ballot in November in Kansas, in okay. Overland Park, Kansas? We're looking at it now. What about uh, Congress? Does that run for Congress? Sure. Now, you know what? Sharice Davis is in my spot. Yeah. She is. I actually kind of like her, so. Hey, look, I know you guys don't, but I do. I don't, what, what, I don't even, I don't know anything yeah, about no, her. What are you talking, saying? I they like don't? Her. I like her. I don't know anything about her. I know that Snowcone doesn't like her, but I don't know anything yeah, about her. Snowcone doesn't like her because she beat Because she reigned against his brother, yeah. 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 So, I mean, there was like personal yeah. thing there, but you but would choose me, her fine. over, you know. Um, whoever else it is. Derek, whoever else. Well, I don't know. Right. I see the uh, online uh, advertisements constantly. That's what Snowcone was saying. It's all he sees on YouTube or oh ads for Oh, my God, the it. Amanda Hacken thing. My oh, God. my God. That's all they do. <laughs> what about this, this woman? Literally this... Okay, let me ask you this, because I wanted to ask you this, and I know we're running late. There is a woman who is like, I was a swimmer. Have you seen this? No. no. I live in Missouri. You haven't? Okay, she's like, it's this blonde-headed woman. She's like, I was a swimmer. I don't know. She's like, I was good at it. And then they show her in a pool. And then she's like, but then one day they made me share a locker next to a transgendered human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Female. And I was never able to swim when, again when did or this something. Happen, and right? like, and then they're like, this can't happen. Governor of Kansas. Whatever, Laura right. Kelly. Well, Governor Laura Kelly has allowed transgender people to play sports. And then I'm like... What? Is this some sort of hypothetical? Like, imagine a world who where... Who is that yeah. girl who's in that... What she I want to know. I want to know that. Who is that girl who's in that commercial? And where did she swim? Right. And what transgendered person was in a locker room next to her? And how in the world was that so catastrophic that you were no longer allowed to be uh, a swimmer, an, an Olympian swimmer? Yeah. She had to is, that what it, like, is that what we're saying? Got into politics. I don't know. I haven't seen this ad, but now I'm curious. Well, someone it's text ridiculous. us. It's uh, ridiculous. What's the text line? 913-586-7965. Someone if you've seen this is. commercial, please text us and tell us you've seen it, and then give us the story behind it, because it's on Hulu constantly, and it's just this... She's just doing the breaststroke. I haven't seen it. And she's like, and then I went in the locker room, and there was like some... Transgendered woman in there. And she's like some... Guy, girl, or is that what I, she says? Something I don't like that? know what she says, but you know, it's more politically well, correct. Someone will send us the name, that, but it's find not commercial. politically correct. Enough. Okay, does okay. that make sense? Yes. Right. The Church of Laszlo. Yo, yo. I can't. There we go. Okay. My what? headphones are broken. It's fine. Need some new ones. Why don't they buy some new ones, Snow Cone? Why don't they he buy could, us anything around he here? He could come here and fix it. Snow Cone. Yeah. What am I gonna do? He didn't know how to fix well, it. I'll get a new plug. It's I gave you a new a plug, one, man. He anyway. wiggled it. He messed with I it. I gave you a new adapter. You could fix it. Don't just worry. give him your headphones. Why don't you just give him your headphones? Why You're do you right. need headphones anyway? Do you don't even need it's them. It's not in the there. headphones. It's the uh, jack. Right. Well, no, you don't give even me need your the jack. Give you put this one in. You don't need to hear anything. Oh, easy joke. Easy joke. Busted. Oh man. Easy, easy, easy. Not happening. Low hanging fruit, boys. Speaking of, uh, Whoopi Goldberg is in the news <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. What's she's wrong in, with Whoopi? dude. Imagine this. Okay, so she's in a very serious movie about uh, Emmett Till. I think it's called Till. Okay, okay. I think she plays his mother. I'm not really sure. Maybe she's his grandmother. I, I don't know. I haven't even seen a trailer for it. I just I know that she's in it, and there is, uh, you know, the the reviews are coming out for it. I guess, and so critics have been writing their reviews. 
So the Daily Beast, the same website that brought us the news that Herschel Walker uh, paid for an abortion allegedly in 2009, the Daily Beast, pretty big news site. They have a critic over there, and she wrote a review for this Till movie. And Whoopi Goldberg addressed this uh, review on national TV and brought something to this, I I assume, this critic's attention that this person didn't know. Snuck on... I have some audio here from uh, Whoopi explaining what went wrong. It's kind of loud, so just uh, watch the volume here. There was a, a young lady who writes, and she was distracted by my fat suit in her review. But it wasn't you should a suit? know that was not a fat suit. That was me. Oh, no. And that was steroids. Remember last year? Yes. I had oh, no. Okay, and I was Ill. very, was very sick. And so, oh, no. but I just want to let you know that it's okay not to be a fan of a movie, but you want to leave people's looks out. Yes. So yes. just comment on the acting, and if you have a question, oh, ask somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> Can you imagine? And look, it's bad enough. Like when you write something like that, when you say anything about a celebrity, you know, it feels like in America, at least, it's, uh, it's you're allowed to make fun of them. You're allowed to make sure. uh, cheap uh, jokes about them. You know, at the expense mm-hmm. of that. Like, make fun of their looks, their weight, sure. whatever it is. Their personal lives, obviously, they go right. after that. But So if you're writing a review and you think she's in a fat suit, and then to say, like, you know, I liked it, but the fat suit was a little distracting. Right. And, and this was a woman. I don't know why, but somehow that seems even worse because it's right. woman on woman crime. Woman on woman you know, like, crime, sure. If it was just a dude, you could have been like, yeah, that chauvinistic pig right. a-hole. But instead, she's like, I was distracted. I couldn't find the quote, actually, because I went back to look for it, and the Daily Beast has taken it down, and which makes sense, right? They, they said, we're going to get rid of this quote. They actually left the review up. They got rid of the part where she talks about the fat suit, and then they write at the bottom of it, um, there's a little disclaimer that says, this story has been updated to reflect that Whoopi Goldberg says she was not wearing a fat suit. Oh, man. Why, did, why is it that she says she's not wearing I like how the Daily Beast is like, she says she's she not. Says it she It looks wasn't. like it to us. <laughs> we can't confirm it, but we're updating it. She says it, if so until we find out. that's not a fat suit, then boy. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You need to pull yourself together. And then the people on the show, her co-hosts, they're like, Oh, well, I feel so bad. You know, you were unhealthy. You you were going through sciatica and all that stuff at the time, which I don't know what that has to do with it. She was taking steroids maybe or something, Who and so cares? that made her... I know, like, the whole thing, just leave, leave it. But if you're Whoopi, don't call her out on national TV. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, I think well, it's wasn't like, she did. It, yeah, but it wasn't... She didn't take a shot at you directly to be mean, right? She said, I was distracted yeah, by the fat like, suit. Like, like, the fat suit didn't look right. fat suit on you, idiot. Right, but she, the woman, I'm guessing those reviews, like the fat, if she's distracted by it, is she saying like, I'm distracted because it doesn't look like a good fat suit, or are you distracted because you're not used to seeing whoopee heavy? It doesn't heavy? matter. Don't say it if you don't know that it's fair true. Enough. Fair, fair, fair enough. Like, I mean, how she ridiculous. Is, she is wearing makeup. So I looked at pictures, uh, you know, screenshots of her from the movie. Like, look, it's... I mean, she's unrecognizable. You can't tell that that's her. They made her look like his mother or whatever. I think that's who she's playing. But so it doesn't look like Whoopi. But so I don't know if she's like because it's she's Whoopi wearing without glasses. Because she's wearing all, no, no, no. They've changed her face. I Come like. on, maybe it is just her close. without glasses. I don't know. I'm not like. Oh, I wouldn't. That's not Whoopi. I don't think I would have recognized her. What do you think, Snow Cone? Does it look like Whoopi there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's just the yeah. no it's like glasses. Her without glasses. Maybe if I draw the glasses on, then it looks yeah, like her. Yeah, different hair. Yeah, so yeah. maybe I thought she had a bunch of makeup on, but it really is. So ridiculous. <laughs> be better people. I'm like, no, and but I get what she thought. She like, why? Like, they changed her face. You know, it's all fat and stuff. I didn't know. So rude. I didn't and even like, just judge her for the I, acting. Like, I was totally I distracted. She, I was totally distracted because <laughs> she's fat. I like, what does that even in, mean? I thought she was in makeup. What does that even mean? I was totally distracted because she's fatter than I remember. That's, I wish I could find the original quote, you know, but they deleted it. I would like, like to know what she said. Thing. Like, did she just say, I was distracted by her performance Man. because of the fat suit? Or was she saying... Really thought Ben Affleck was good in that movie, but just couldn't get over how fat he was. <laughs> like, what? It's not a thing. You'll say that. Right. Was she saying like the she thought she thought the fat suit looked bad? Like that it didn't I don't it know. It could have looked bad because it was it wasn't real. Her. I know, I know. So so that, like so whatever so you were thinking that it looked bad. Right, it just didn't. don't just don't say it. But you know, I just it's one of those things. Everyone has one of those moments in life where they say something, they put their foot in their mouth, and they're in that moment. 
Obviously, this woman wrote it down for the Daily Beast, but you know, Whoopi called her out on national TV. Good that, for that, Whoopi. That, that, that's well, I'm that solidly sucks. in Whoopi's corner. Here. You think so? Oh, I'm, I'm in her corner. I'm just saying, like, if it happened to you, would you call the person Absolutely. out, or would you go to them directly and be like, "Hey, just so you no. know," depending Absolutely. on what it said. Okay, you wrote an article in, uh, online or in a newspaper or something. Yeah, for the Daily I Beast. I said I was in a fat suit. Yeah, I was distracted and by I a wasn't, fat suit. I would absolutely call you out. Okay. Fair enough. I'm just not confrontational, I guess. I'd I'd maybe send him a little... I don't even know that I would tweet at them publicly. I might send him a DM like, hey, tweet it. Follow me so I can DM you, bro. He'd be like, hey, just so you know, that is my actual right. face. No, I would absolutely it's not, be like, yo, it's, it's not, not, age not a progression. suit. That's me. <laughs> the Church of Laszlo. Yo. Yo. All right, are we done here? Almost, I think, right? Is this where we've, we're nearing last the one. end? Hmm? This is our last one. Our last what? Our last break. The last time we talk? Well, well, we'll have a goodbye, too. What do you mean? We'll have a goodbye. You know what I mean. Stop playing dumb. Do you, seriously, do you know what he means? He's like, we'll have a goodbye, You know too. what I'm talking I don't know why you're playing <laughs> We're dumb. Gonna have a goodbye party or something. I don't know, why you're I don't know what now. you're you know talking what about. talking about. Yes, you do. I can't tell if you're messing with me or no, what's going on right now. On all Lazo asked was, are we done? Yeah, that's all I want to know. We are not done. You could have just told him what time it was. You could have read the clock behind his head and told him what time it was, or you could have said, like, not almost, you know, fill a few more minutes here, boss. Almost fill a few, fill more. A few more minutes here, boss. You fill more you got a few it, buddy. more. Oh, I got one for you if you want to fill a few more minutes here. Okay. Because I saw, uh, man, people, I just feel bad for human beings in general. They're just so, they're just so sad. This is the okay. top 10 things. What was it? How did they word it? It was the, the top 10 things that adults wished they could do in public. I think is what they said. Yeah, okay. The 10 things that adults wish they could do freely in public. This is what, you know, I guess their ideal world would be. Or maybe their idea of heaven. I don't really know. But they asked these adults. They actually took the time and asked them these questions. I don't know if they said, like, would you like to do this or not? Or if people just responded. But <clears throat> there was I mean, the list is really long. I'm not going to go through all of them. But the 10 things, the top 10 things that they said they wish they could freely do in public are these okay number 10 dancing in the street first of all uh why can't you dance in the street i mean unless you're jaywalking don't. you get you can dance like sure. if you go out in the street if i go outside like, and i'll start dancing being judged is that right that would be different i mean if you're saying that you want to do it and not have anyone judge you for it judged. well that's life like you're gonna get judged for everything good or bad and if you're just worried about that then you could do it when no one else is around but either way there's no law that says you can't go out there and dance and if you want to dance yeah. Go dance. Dance. The next one is um, adjusting your underwear, like pulling a wedgie or adjusting, you know, scratching your front or scratching your back while people are around. Again, I mean, how often does this come up that there's someone staring right at you that you can't catch like a second to get out of their line of sight to adjust yourself? I would assume that we all adjust our underwear or scratch or something, you know, a few times a week at least, and you just wait until... Sure. Are you constantly surrounded by people staring at what you're doing? Do it discreetly. Or are you really saying, I wish that I could just scratch and adjust and, and not have to wait for people to look away? Because again, I mean, you technically can. I guess we're just judging you. Walk barefoot in public. Another one that you could definitely yeah. do. Now, when you walk barefoot, I'm judging you for sure. When I, I see, When I see someone... Walking around with put some shoes on, man. dirty, dirty feet. Put some shoes for no on. reason. Like if you are in a a situation, you know, if you find yourself temporarily unhoused. You're you you can't you don't you're have any born shoes. Born in the Congo? No, no, no. Like you're you're broken. Your shoes fall apart or whatever. Like, you know, if you're you don't have money for shoes, and you're out on the street corner begging for change. It's a little different. But when you're like uh, you know, just a hippie who's walking down the street with no shoes or socks on, I'm judging you yeah, for that. A hundred percent. Or if you're at a wedding and you decide to take your shoes off, keep yeah. your shoes on. Or even if you're like wearing sandals, I can tell that your shoes have been off a lot because <laughs> you just have that, you know, your feet have that look like super flat. You, yeah, and they're just <laughs> super dirty. You're like, you just kicked those shoes on mm -hmm. before you came in here because you had to, because we're in a bank or whatever, right? <laughs> and you and you have those in the car. I'm with you. But you drive put without them. On. Put put some shoes on. I am gonna judge you for that. Uh listening to music without headphones. Why? Again, I don't understand that one. You can listen to music without headphones. If you want to walk around with a boombox like it's 1986, you know, and put it on your shoulder. Sure. But is it because you want me to hear it or is it because you enjoy it more when it's not in your headphones? Because I feel like headphones solve this problem. You can listen to the music right, wherever sure. you go, whatever you want, as loud as you want, and no one else has to hear it. People really, really wish that they could fart or burp loudly in public. Why? I don't know. Again, 
I'm confused why by all this because that? why do you wish that? I think they're saying they wish they could do this without judgment. I get no, it, but why? Judgment. But why? But why? Yeah, I understand the why. Is it killing just... you to hold it in for two seconds? <laughs> right, my God. Like, man, if I could do anything in man, public. Man, I just wish I would have no manners. I could just, you know what I really wish? Wish I could walk around with no shoes. <laughs> right, that's and your just dream? burp wherever I want. I want to burp and fart. Like, really? And... So what, you want to live in a trailer? Like, you're old, like, that's what you're working for. Well, well, I live in a trailer I mean, park. I, Hang out with trailer park. That's what you want? Like, well, you can do that. I don't know. Super easy. They're living in a trailer means you it's don't wear shoes. It is. It's <laughs> it super is. easy. You can it absolutely is. do that. And it takes almost, from what I can tell, little to no effort. Little to no effort you, you can, can pull this things. off. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. you can do all these things. Telling someone that you love them. Yeah, you could do that too. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what they're going to say back to you. They might say you're fired. They might all that. say, I don't know. Tell everybody yeah. that. Yeah, well, just, but you are absolutely allowed to tell people that you love them. Walk down the street and sing loudly. I think you can dance in the street, tell people you love them, not wear shoes, and burp wherever you go in a trailer park. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I literally believe that's not any, no one's going to even look at you You mean oddly. no one's going to notice. Right. Like, no, no one's going to look no at like, this is your you. dream place. They don't even notice. And if the cops say, did you notice someone walking around barefoot, singing loudly, farting, adjusting <laughs> themselves a lot? Like, well, mm, yeah, uh, every day. I couldn't tell you, you know, like, <laughs> the last time, I mean, it's always happening. I'm not right. really sure. Uh, going to the movies alone. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I mean, now yeah. you, I guess you're worried about being judged for that, but. You, you can go to the movies yeah. alone. And, and honestly, who's judging you for that? When you go to the movies and you see someone alone, do you think like that poor Here's son of a bitch? After you do <laughs> no. it, I, look, because I know people are scared to do it. Just do it once and you're and over I get, it. Once you do it and you realize that absolutely nobody is watching you. Right. Like they literally don't care. We always think they do, but they don't. Like they're just in line getting popcorn too. They don't know if they literally have no idea whether your girlfriend, wife, boyfriend, kids, whatever, are in the theater waiting for you. They have no idea. No one is even contemplating nope. it. Just go do it. Again, if a cop but says, you, you have see to do it once. No, I, I get it why it's hard the first time. I made but it a New Year's resolution it, one year. I was like, I'm going to do more stuff alone. And one of them was going to see movies alone. And I did it. New Year's it. resolution. And also, your wife did by divorcing. <laughs> well, so this was, was a long time ago. This was even before good her. Good for her. She's like, I get, guess but, what you're going to do? A <laughs> lot of things right. alone. <laughs> but you're right. Once you go alone once, it's kind of it's same with going out sure. to eat. Like now, I'm not saying that everywhere you go out to eat. If you're going out to a nice uh, sit-down steak restaurant, maybe you're a little more worried about the looks. But like a diner stuff like that, nobody cares. There's nobody plenty cares. of people there alone. And the thing that people wish they could do the most. Now they say this one they know they can do, but they wish they could do it without risking uh, it coming off wrong. Which I mean, yeah, I get that. That's lots of things in life. But they wish they could compliment strangers. Yeah. Without them, without being worried that it comes off as creepy or inappropriate or whatever. Or scary. I like what you've done with the trailer, Sheila. <laughs> like, it's easy. Just do mm. that. Your feet look good. good. My God. Oh, my God. Is that God. a garden you got back there? <laughs> Is that... Where, have you been farting out here? <laughs> Is that you? I thought I heard something. The Church of Laszlo. Yo. Yo. You good? I'm good. We're done. All right. That was nice. I felt good today. That's it. Right. I couldn't find that commercial, though. I the found the guy swimming? who's running against. Yeah, I found the guy who's running against, or at least I think who's running against and Laura, Laura Kelly, Kelly. Right. And then I looked up commercials. I found a Rand Paul commercial that features an athlete talking about having to compete no, with trans. This is a woman swimmer. Yeah, this was a swimmer. Like this, but there was a Rand Paul commercial. But I have not. I could not find the. Oh, local you couldn't one. find it. Mm-mm, I couldn't find the local one. So if someone sees that, and Snow Cone was absolutely no help. He's in there listening to Game of Thrones podcast. We gave him one job. Look up the, the political ads so we can figure out what it is and play it before we get out of here. But we couldn't find it. But it is funny yeah. that the idea that that commercial, when I went to look it up, that Rand Paul's writing it, and like this is just a thing. I'm sure who knows how many different candidates are running this uh, similar well, ad. Well, my God, it's crazy because I just Googled women swimmer Kansas political ad. Okay. And it comes up. You found the ad? The yeah, actual so ad? I don't know how much. Time I only searched once. It. I looked up the commercials for this idiot. guy. <laughs> hey, Snow Cone didn't find Google Snow Cone didn't find it either. Don't deflect. Swimmer Kansas political ad. Okay. And that's swimmer Riley Gaines, who competed against controversial transgender collegiate swimmer Leah Thomas, is speaking out against uh, this time against Kansas Governor Laura Kelly. If Laura Kelly can't protect women, she shouldn't be governor of Kansas, Gaines says in the video, which features her swimming in a pool. Okay, so it's, it's a different ridiculous. girl, I guess, than I don't know how many of these girls they've got, but uh, is it the one? I, you know what? I'll stay out of it because I don't know that much about how many of these stories there have been. I've seen them in the news. I know there was that one transgendered athlete 
what was she? She wasn't like. Was that a college though, or was that a high school? The one that was in the news last summer all the time. I don't remember. Maybe it was two summers ago. I don't remember. I just don't know how many times this has come up. But I know it's a hot button issue over there. So, but it, you were you were asking for people to text in, like if they know. Who- says as a child, I woke up at four a.m. to swim every day, and my work got me to nationals. Gaines continues in the ad describing her hard work, but then. I was forced to share a locker room with a biological man. It was uncomfortable and it was wrong. In the pool, he claimed a trophy that a woman had earned. This has to stop, she continued. Uh, Gaines has been vocal about the issue, so there you go. She was very upset. Uh, and one of them, sorry. the one for uh, uh, Ray and Paul, the swimmer's a UK swimmer. Like, that's not even... It says UK swimmer featured in Rand Paul campaign ad, highlight, highlighting debate in women's sports. Like, what? But it's not even the United States. I don't know. So I'll have to look at the ad. What'd you say the opponent's name was? I don't know. Uh, Derek Schmidt. It is I Derek guess. Schmidt. Okay. Because yeah. that's the name that I saw. Was but Derek she Schmidt. lost to a transgender swimmer. I Like, whatever. <laughs> My, I mean, I know I'm the worst guy in the world. It's like, swim faster. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? Like, Literally, what do you want? Like, you woke up every morning at 4 a.m. in the morning and just saying that this dude jumps in the pool out of nowhere. He never practiced <laughs> and beats you by half a pool length. Try harder. <laughs> like, get faster. Like, I don't know what you want. Like, it, when I, I know I'm a sports guy. I know people are going to so mad at me for that. But, like, what are you talking about? Well, you've just said that what you we're going no, to is... You had no ability. You practiced your entire life, and this guy uh, just... Jumped in, said his name was Leah, and just crushed you in a swimming race. Like, that's where we're at? Like, that, And then what, we just have to stop that nonsense? Like, I don't know. Apparently, I know they're very upset. I know this is like a big, big, big issue, so... I know. Uh, I wanted to see the ad. I also saw that there's a I know, and of- also, Republicans, like, like, now you're mad at me because I'm talking to smack, but it, it, I make The left I is make, just as mad at you. I make you, the left just as mad right now. Like, I'm, maybe, I'm like, come maybe on. Maybe angrier. Maybe, right. Yeah. Like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Like, right? Like, whatever. I know. There's the fact, though, that we this is what sports. we're talking about. We just need sports. Stop it. Sports. Like, this is definitely the most important issue on everyone's brains. You know, this is, this is it. When I think about what families are talking about around the dinner table and what they're worried about and how they're going to pay their bills and all that stuff. It's, it really comes down to transgender well, athletes and swimming. Like, all right. I know I'm going to get in trouble. This is what she says. Being at that meet, seeing firsthand, just not in terms of height, but just jumping off the starting block. Thomas, the person that she's competing against, right? Yeah. Is about half a length ahead. Feeling how it affected everyone else, including myself, seeing the tears and seeing the discomfort in the locker room, the talk of anger and frustration, it was just majorly eye-opening, she described at the time. Are we just saying that, literally are we saying that you can't compete? For transgender athletes? Yeah. You yes, that's what they've right, said. Like, right. Well, or they have you to have their own league, yes. Right, you, and, and women cannot... Well, they said that they can they said Women, that they no matter compete. what, by the best in the world, women, you cannot compete with a transgender athlete. You just can't. They've said that the transgender athletes can only compete with the sex that they were assigned at birth, is what they I know, what say. I'm saying is our, our women saying in 2022, we do, look, if you allow transgendered women to compete in these sports, we'll just lose. We can't compete. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They've been saying it. Well, I don't love that. Well, I mean, that's been the issue, and it started with that track thing, which we talked about years ago, and those scholarships being lost. And I understand some of the, you know, I understand why there's a debate. What I can't believe, I guess I can believe, but I'm annoyed by is the fact that this seems to be the most important thing in the world to Republicans, when, you know, during election yeah, time. Swim faster. Yeah, Slazzle says swim faster. Swim faster. You got up at four, get up at three. Work a little. You got hard. work to do. Yeah, like that's it. Do. You got work to do. I mean, you could win at four a.m., but now you got Leah Thomas, and you're gonna have to get up early. Get up earlier. Swim faster. All right, we're done. We're done. All right, good show, Leah. Stay positive, kids. The Church, the Church of Laszlo.